Welcome back, everyone, to session 12 of Pandemonium. Uh, the crew just kind of survived a pretty big ordeal and made their way to level five. Uh, kicking it off with a recap, the crew had decided after uh, learning from uh, their one-time ally, General Thrax Thanza, that the Emperor had been found by Squad 7 and his body taken to the uh, Temple of Thana uh, as uh, the Emperor had fallen into a coma. Uh, Squad 7 was hoping to bring him there to find answers or safe refuge for the Emperor while they plotted their next move. But through uh, General Thrax's means, he uncovered the Emperor's location uh, and basically declared that he would uh, want to obtain them. Uh, saying that the Emperor, uh, even a comatose Emperor, is still a symbol, something to rally the people around, and that he, the Loyalists, the Imperialists, all would fight to the death uh, to be the one that says they have control of the body. Uh, with that, too, General Thrax said that he did not believe the Imperialists or the Loyalists were fit to lead the Emperor Empire, and until the Emperor returned, he would be making his own bid for control uh, and hoping to use his own influence to shape the Empire and lead it to a better future. Uh, but with that, though, the group decided to kind of go their own way, not wanting to empower any one of the three factions. Um, they set off to the Temple of Thana, hoping to recover the Emperor's body and keep it safe from all factions. Uh, making their way to the sands of Ateria, they found that uh, a faction from Will's past, the Luminescence, uh, had uncovered the location of the Emperor uh, after killing one of the Clan Thanza guards that was stationed at the temple. Uh, and it decided, well, their main goal was to look for Will. Uh, acquiring the Emperor would be a great cherry on top. Uh, so they decided to make their way to the Temple of Thada, laying siege to it. Uh, the group was able to beat their way through uh, kind of all three layers of the uh, luminescent faction, taking them out, including a light drake named Wrath, uh, eventually making their way to the Emperor's body in Squad 7. After a you know, tense conversation with Squad 7 and its leader, Beric Anderson, uh, the group was able to convince them that while a lot of the rumors about Squad Seven or Squad uh, the the gavels are true, not all of them are, uh, and that they are truly trying to do their best uh, and help Kazia and help bring peace to Ateria, uh, earning a measure of Barrack's trust, uh, and kind of in just in time for the fallen sons, a mercenary company under the commander, believed to be under the command of the 13th Legion and General Thrax, uh, had made their way to the Temple of Thana, uh, declaring that they were here to save the temple uh, with one of the luminescents who had escaped the battle before in chains uh, at their feet. Uh, where the group then kind of sprung into action, Will buying the group some time with a lengthy introduction of himself and Belric, uh, Jeet getting a message uh, from uh, Melissa, the, one of his former mentors and monks uh, at the Burning Dragon Monastery, letting them know that the Will or uh, Jeet will always be safe uh, in the monastery. He'll always have sanctuary, and that uh, extends to the gavels as well, uh, and that they will also safeguard the body of the emperor for a time. Uh, and with that, the group prepared, uh, got into a bit of a chase uh, with the uh, the fallen sons as they used a carriage to break out of the Temple of Thana and race towards the Burning Dragon Monastery. After fighting off wyverns, breaking through barricades, uh, fighting uh, the the legions of the, uh, the, the fallen sons, uh, the group did make their way out. But the battle was a pretty tough one. Uh, the group had tried to go uh, kind of non-lethally against the Fallen Sons, hoping not to uh, kind of earn the wrath of General Thrax or the Fallen Sun Mercenary Company, uh, and was mostly successful. Uh, only two wyverns fell uh, or died to the group's attacks. Uh, the one Fallen Sun was hit with an arrow bolt that should have been lethal, uh, a shot that should have killed him, uh, but uh, after getting a potion, he seemed to stir or move or revive a little bit. Uh, but the bolt just struck me. Warrior's viewpoint looked like it could have been a deadly strike, could have finished him. Uh, 
But with that, though, the group was able to escape these fallen suns, make their way onto the lands of the Burning Dragon Monastery, uh, seeing a older dragonborn monk uh, with kind of pale red scales and even some gray hair kind of growing around her face. Uh, and you saw her as you guys kind of cross threshold from the golden sands of Ateria to the more scorched earth, scorched, scorched earth of the Redding Dragon Monastery. Uh, you saw her wave her hands in a wall of fire separate you from the fallen suns. Uh, and that's where we'll pick up now. Uh, we're going to kick up right there from there. Uh, as you guys cross through that boundary, uh, you do see uh, this kind of just why is in monk? Uh, I could definitely see the age upon her, but the way that she moves, uh, gracefully, like somebody like a third of her age, uh, and you see her kind of walking up towards your uh, carriage. Uh, and as you see her walking up to you, do see three horses from your side, the kind of the burning dragon monastery side of the fire, uh, come racing towards you. Uh, and you recognize all three of them. Uh, you do see one of them uh, is Beric Anderson kind of racing towards the aid at assistance. Uh, but you also see two of uh, your own followers uh, who you sent along with the uh, Squad 7 to help safeguard the Emperor. Uh, you see Elisa uh, along with Ostin uh, kind of riding their way to you. Uh, and with that, too, you see kind of a Jeet first. Uh, she comes up to you. Uh, Melissa just kind of gives you like a, has a smile on her face. And you kind of see her looking you up and down and goes, Well, you've always kept things interesting, young one. How have Nars Fires treated you throughout this ordeal? You're on mute. Uh, still muted. Now frozen? I think it's frozen now. While he's uh, getting back on to you, do see as uh, the the monk approaches Jeet. Uh, oh, Jeet, are you back? I guess not. Oh, you are. Oh, yeah. oh. those are words. Can you hear me? Okay. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> uh, he does a deep bow uh, and he says, Lisa, my pilgrimage of the realm is not yet complete, and yet I must return to the monastery. I hope you do not consider it shameful. You see her smile and she kind of pats your armor and goes, you always have a place in the monastery, uh, especially when you kind of see her look uh, to uh, Beric as he kind of rides up and especially when you bring such interesting people with you. I can't say before I've had a chance to meet the emperor. Uh, don't know if it counts if he's asleep or not, but I can say I've been in his presence. The Emperor, well, we, on the Emperor's behalf, seek sanctuary within the monastery. I know you've already said it through the message, but here before all of us, do you grant it to us? You see here kind of uh, hold uh, one of her heads across uh, her chest as she nods and goes, Jeet, as I've said, you will always have sanctuary within these grounds, and that sanctuary is extended to the gavels. You will be safe here until time ends or till the monastery falls. For the Emperor, we will protect him for a time. We will have to figure out what best to do with him. But for you all, even if the host of Rog show up on our shores, we will defend. Walker, is that a split to the side? Or just a split to the side? We Will is in the background, like, uh, 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 like, because we still we just got away from the bad guys like forty five seconds ago, I think. So, <laughs> just exhausted. And you guys, long, this long has been journey, a long journey, because you guys, uh, we kind of time was running out last session, so we kind of went through it pretty quickly. Uh, but this was a two day, pretty much race away from the the temple of thada with the fallen suns kind of snapping at your heels the whole way this was a th this was a journey <laughs> uh yeah, you guys made it safe and you do see uh Olsten along with Barrick finally ride up 
Uh, and Ostin looks at the group and goes, Oof, we made it. You guys look a little worse than we do, but hey, you made it. That we did. And I'm wondering now if our other companions made it. What happened to uh, Squad 7, I wonder? You see Barrick nods. Uh, he goes, thank you for your concern. Squad 7 has made it. No casualties. Uh, the rest are uh, taking some much needed relaxation. Uh, but I heard that you all were making your approach uh, and wanted to lend a hand if I could. But fortunately, it does not seem you needed it. Yes, we are here. We have been granted official sanctuary and we should go in before dinner is served because Kazuo makes the best food in all of Ateria. You see, uh, get Melissa nods and goes, ah, he is preparing something nice. Uh, I have to let him know that you're here to see if he can serve some of your favorites tonight. All right, come on, everyone. Uh, I'll show you around. Uh, and you've never seen you look so boyish before mockery's right behind g trying his best to be respectful and also uh incredibly excited and you guys as you kind of come into the the area fully uh the burning dragon monastery it it, it just looks unique uh outside of g i don't think anybody else has been here but this you see kind of just buildings scattered throughout uh it has like you, you could almost feel the heat kind of radiating off the land, but it's not like a humid heat. Uh, it's almost a pleasant heat. You could definitely feel it. You feel hot, but not like a sweaty, uh, uncomfortable heat. You almost feel it's almost warming your bones, uh, almost an invigorating fire, just kind of lighting through the land. Uh, you do see uh, the land itself, rather than kind of the usual sands of Ateria, uh, you see kind of like uh, some places like this glassy surface, almost as if the, the sand has been fused in the glass. Other places uh, you see kind of more uh, of this just hardened rock, almost hardened lava on the ground. Uh, the monastery itself, kind of the main temple uh, you see, it's just lit with fires of multiple different colors. You see columns lining the way towards it, and you see red fires, blue fires, uh, yellow fires, pretty much every color of fire that you can. Uh, and you see people drilling uh, kind of in the yards. You see some focusing on their martial forms, uh, kind of perfecting their technique, just drilling the same things over and over and over again until it's almost flawless. Uh, others you see uh, even kind of like working with the fire. You see some kind of bending the fire to their will uh, and kind of using it in different uh, forms and attacks. Uh, you even see others uh, kind of similar uh, to G kind of wearing the heavy armor uh, with the symbols of Nar around them, uh, either in prayer or meditation, uh, or even kind of focusing on their martial gifts. Uh, but you see all of these just kind of being drilled in uh, as they lead you in uh, to the monastery. Uh, but as you guys go, uh, you do hear uh, a voice call out to you almost overly enthusiastically, uh, like just a childlike enjoyment, uh, and you hear, he goes, guys, 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 hey, it's me, it's Olu, uh, and you see uh, Olu come running through, uh, like, he's in a gi, it looks like he was probably in the middle of a class or drills or something, uh, but he sees you guys and just straight dips out running towards you, uh, just a big old smile. Hey there, little man, it's good to see you. It's been too long. It has, yeah. I'm in the monastery. Yeah, they gave me a gi. I've been training. What, what, what are you guys doing? I think I'd see you again. Uh, that is a, a real long story. We can maybe tell you all about that <laughs> later, but I'd like to know what uh, you've been up to recently. And so I just want to sort of distract him talking about his own stuff so that I don't have to tell him that we're fugitives. <laughs> <laughs> in addition to that, Mockery will just quickly cut in to say, Oga of Soga, I have a dog. Yeah. <laughs> like picks him need. up and ha like picks up the hyena and like gives it to Oga. I imagine the hyena is like the size of Oga too. It's pretty much. <laughs> you see, like, at first Oga looks apprehensive. He goes, oh, oh, "Cool, uh, 
I don't think this is a dog, though. I. <laughs> Barrick, is this a dog? <laughs> uh, Bear comes up and like goes to like you know just like put his face into him and just knocks him and the hyena over, like because he <laughs> recognizes him. <laughs> You see, he sprawls, he's playing with the hyena, looking at Bear, just overly excited. Uh, but you do see kind of Melissa kind of just clear her throat like a... <clears throat> <laughs> Olga, do you not have duties that you should be doing right now? Uh, it looks like you should be training. Uh, and you see Olga kind of stand up, and he kind of like... He's still smiling, but he does kind of stand to attention a little bit. And he goes, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah you're right. I'll, I'll see you guys at dinner. Uh, and you see him kind of race uh, back to uh, kind of where he's supposed to be uh, in training through. Uh, but they do kind of extend the hospitality of the monastery to you. Uh, they provide you with rooms. Uh, Jeet, they even provide you with kind of your old room that you had uh, during your time in the monastery. Luckily, it was still empty, so uh, you're able to kind of sleep in that. The spot that you're used to on that side. Uh, but they give you some time to kind of get dressed, clean up uh, after two days riding through the desert sands uh, before kind of getting a chance to meet them for dinner and kind of discuss next steps with what the Gavils and Squad 7 want to do and how the, the Burning Mon Dragon Monastery can assist. Before we get to that, though, does anybody want to have anything crazy they want to do? Uh... I got something of mockery, but that can go last if everyone else has something they want. Um, Saria would ask Jeet if there's a library around. She did promise a tour of the place. And <laughs> she's curious what kind of information they might have around here that could be useful to us. Yes, yes, well, uh, we have. Uh, so it's a mix of things. The monks uh, carry a lot of knowledge using the oral tradition as well. So uh, they will tell you you stories and uh, the teachings of Nar uh, and these words and the exact verbiage has been kept uh, without breaking for several hundreds of generations. But at the same time, we also, of course, also have text. Uh, it has to be uh, not just paper. Uh, you'll love this or maybe not. I, I don't know. But stone tablets because, you know, fire uh, almost everywhere. So uh, some codexes fireproof. But otherwise, lots, lots of engravings. Uh, we have, um, uh, yeah, stone tablets. We have uh, metallic stele uh, and things. Just, just a bunch of things uh, all around. A uh, couple of places where they're clustered. Uh, and Tegan, you can tell me if there's like other special areas where there's like a library. Yeah, so they, they do have a library. A lot of it is kind of focused uh, uh, on the traditions of the monks, uh, and, and definitely G called like a lot of like the a lot of those traditions and the histories are kind of orally uh, spoken as well. So you can get people to tell stories about the, the history of the Burning Dragon Monastery, uh, or more, and especially there's a lot too uh, about kind of Nars Inferno and the mountain and his shrine uh, dedicated to him, uh, and then kind of some history on the empire as well. Um, those are kind of the areas it specializes in, uh, mostly with kind of the, the religious aspects. Uh, Wisteria, was there anything in particular you'd be looking for in a library? Um, not exactly. Just trying to get a good sense of the people here because, you know, just the way Wisteria thinks is like, we're probably going to have to have some negotiations or asking them favors. And the more she can know about their history, what they've done in the past, the more she can come to those discussions with kind of the background that she needs to, to offer them the things they want to hear and things like that. So getting familiar with people here. And she's obviously picked up a lot of that from Jeet and traveling with him. But um, and, and I think like that's how she would kind of dive into it. But pretty quickly, it would just turn into research for research's sake, just trying to, uh, you know, she loves reading about history and the things that have happened and gets excited by all the little stories from ancient times and, and tales about Nar and the battles he's been in and things like that. Okay. Um, so are you looking to do all or kind of, because depending on what you're looking for, that may be kind of a downtime piece or kind of something you quickly could do before dinner. Is there anything in, like, before kind of meeting with dinner, is there anything in particular that Wisteria would be looking to do? Or just kind of finding where the library is? Um, kind of finding where the library is and maybe just like browsing a few books at random just to see the, the sort of 
get a sense of what's there, but not not anything in particular that she wants to spend a lot of time on. Yeah, definitely. And with that, you kind of see yeah, a lot of it is kind of based on the histories of both the monastery, a lot to, dedicated to kind of the works of Nar. Uh, you see kind of the, the the works of Nar and his flame keepers, uh, the kind of the, the, the clerical order kind of dedicated to, or the war priest order dedicated to kind of lifting up and kind of spreading uh, both his teachings and kind of his philosophy uh, around the world. Uh, and just kind of figuring out a little bit about, and some things that kind of make sense about Jeet now that you got to kind of see them on paper, if that makes sense. Uh, you get to see a little bit uh, kind of about the the tenets that Nar holds his followers to. Uh, so you get to see kind of what things that he prizes in his followers, what things he, he doesn't. Uh, and you kind of see it. So for Pathfinder terms, you get to see his edicts and anathemas. Uh, so for edicts, fight for justice, fight for your own honor, fight for the honor of the people, uh, fight for your honor, fight for your clan's honor, fight for the honor of the people that you value, um, hold valor in your valor in your heart, uh, as well as embrace your inner fire. Uh, for an ethnos, though, uh, dishonor yourself, refuse a challenge from an equal, uh, and use fire irresponsibly. It calls harm with your fire without cause. Uh, you can see that's kind of like for both uh, the flame keepers uh, as well as the burning dragon monster, that's kind of like their overall ethos. Cool. I think the other thing to try to keep an eye out for is if there's any like either section of the library or things that like certain tomes reference to that clue in that there's maybe some like forbidden section of knowledge or things that is like just for the monks to access that she wouldn't have any access to. Yeah, uh, G will let you know there is a section uh, that's kept in a separate location. Okay. No, that area is for uh, the el elders. Yes, uh, I, I have been shown around it, but not allowed to touch any of the uh, tomes in it yet. But soon enough, you know, uh, I brought the emperor here. That has got to come for something, right? <laughs> yeah. Um... So she'll seem kind of a little curious about that, maybe ask a few follow-up questions, but, um, and this might get more into downtime stuff, but sometimes during the town time, she's going to try to sneak into that area. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So she'll be really careful about it. Um, and if it seems impossible, she's not going to risk it, but she definitely wants to. Just try don't to get it. <laughs> Yeah. Certainly she knows not to tell you. Um, but that's, she's going to start keeping an eye out for opportunities or like if she figures out people who might have a way into it, if they have like a key or something she can steal, like that's, that's kind of like her short term goal at the moment. All right. What information well, is she trying to gather? Just anything or? The forbidden information. <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> Just whatever. The things they don't want you to know. Those yeah, are the well, most interesting. That's, just, that's the best stuff. All right. Okay. No, that's good. Uh, I hope you find Eldritch Horrors from Beyond the Stars. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite. Or perhaps just like embarrassing photos of like monks or something. <laughs> One of those two. <laughs> well, Wisteria's plotting her uh, break into the Forbidden Out mileage. What is everybody else doing? And as they prepare for get up dinner and meeting with the monks. Uh, Mockery's gonna take some time with G. Uh, I, I thought there would be much opportunity to get G alone right now because he's home, he's around a lot of people he knows, he's also showing the gavel, uh, hey. his compatriots hey. for so long in this hey, government. Everyone. Oh, hey, Mockery, ah, yes. do you, yes. uh, to clean up, do you want to go to the hot springs? It smells a little sulfuric, you know, kind of <laughs> like you. Thank you. <laughs> May I have you come with me? Yes, yes. I need to clean up. My goodness. I thought I would be so tired after coming here after all of that journey. But like something about this place, you know, just. Yeah, uh, yeah sorry. This way. Yeah. The heat is invigorating. Right. The good kind of heat. <laughs> I, um, I, I must thank you for a, a while ago you offered that you'd show me this place and you'd welcome me to here. And I thank you for keeping your word on this. 
Not that I think you'd lie. No, truthfully, I, I believed you wholeheartedly. It's just seeing it for myself, everything around, even the volcano, now that we're close enough. It is spectacular. And these people, they seem like your family. Jeet's chest just keeps puffing up more and more. It, it is spectacular, isn't it? it, it Look, look at it, Mockery. Like it's all uh, the fire and the there's power, but there's also discipline and there's the, the knowledge of warfare and there's might, might, but not just might for the sake of might, but might that can uh, be honed, that can be used to make ourselves better, that can be used to make others better. Uh, <coughs> I don't know it if he fully realizes it. It is purposeful. But, yes. Control and purposeful. I don't know if Jeet realizes it, but he is giving a sales pitch, and it is not a soft <laughs> sell either. Check out this. Check out this weapon over here. And he goes to one of the like two cross naginata that are hanging uh, along the walls, uh, and he brings it up. Like, look at this. Look at the grace and elegance and the reach that it has. And he just like hands it over to you. Check it out. Check it out. <laughs> I, uh, <clears throat> uh, yes. Let me see. It is wonderful. And he'll hand it back. Uh, very scared about uh, like scuffing it up, or even the fact he's got like his fingerprints on it. He's worried, so he also hands Jeet a rag. <laughs> this place, I thank you. I am. Um, I, I, I'll be honest. I also expected not quite as much of a. Uh, warm welcome. I, I was afraid that my presence here would uh, solely how they embraced you. And I'm glad it did not. In fact, I've barely seen a nasty gaze. That could be just the fact I'm enamored by the architecture. But uh, your, your people, they seem wonderful. Oh, uh, yes, the monks, they are, they have spent so much time training their mind, their um, emotions that, uh, well, it's good that they're welcoming up front. They're not lying. They, they will be straightforward with you when the need arises, but they're also not the ones to let their emotions go out of control. Oh, right. Hold on. I should do some breathing exercises because I'm letting my emotions out of control. But well, uh, we go. Yes, we go this way, and um, it's just uh, he puts an arm on Mockery's shoulder. You are welcome here. Uh, you have sanctuary here, and no one here will harm you while I have anything to say about it. But don't let the facade the. The, the seeming of it would be your full impression of um, what might be underneath. People here know how to control themselves, but thoughts can go in all different directions. I see. This is a good place for Okolan. It will teach him discipline. And I will be careful. Thank you. Can I call you now, my friend? <laughs> oh, right. When I said that we were uh, a troop. Uh, yes. Uh, yeah, and he holds his hand forward just to shake. Mockery will take in the full on, you son of a bitch, like Predator style <laughs> handshake. Yes, another friend. Thank you again, Acne Cheat. Thank you. I'll be on my best behavior. I, I will not challenge any of the monks here. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you should. Mockery, you should. This is a place where a challenge will not be easily denied, and nor will a challenge will be met dishonorably. Oh my god, uh, uh, Mockery, you would fit in so well here. If you could spend, I mean, we don't have much time, but if you could spend. Um, a month or two, I feel like you would really find your your vibe, uh, yeah, 
you won't say why. Uh, your people, your your spirit, uh, over here in this monastery. But for now, let's just let's just go get cleaned up, friend. Friend. And uh, mockery will follow G to uh, to get cleaned up. Perfect. As you guys are getting cleaned up, uh, Belric, Will, anything you guys want to do before we uh, shift to dinner? Will also needs to take a bath. <laughs> I think that's it, really. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, we'll just take a long soak, like just just laid back. Absolutely, <laughs> getting all the sand out of his everything. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, Belric and Bear would just kind of like walk around, um, just doing a little bit of like light exploring, but like not too like inquisitive, like not. Not talking to many people, just like kind of like observing and um, admiring what's you know this new place. Yeah. And Bella, could you walk around? You see, like probably drawn like some of the more kind of the natural aspects of the area. You get to see mm -hmm. like they've got like these geysers where I like, kind of think of Yellowstone, but rather than just like shooting steam, which it does shoot steam occasionally, every now and then it'll just bellow out fire. It's like a natural occurrence. Uh, you even see too that they've got a stable of animals that they take care of as well and some even use them for their training uh you see fire drakes you see um riding uh drakes uh you you see kind of just an assortment uh, of creatures kind of suited to the heat to the flames uh as you kind of take a look around the monastery uh and will as you're taking that soak too uh you see kind of your new friend jump in uh, the guy that you hyped up last session, Beshnit, kind of just like plops in. Uh, he goes, "Was that title? That, that's for on. I'm, I'm, I'm not the bearer, right?" <laughs> oh no! Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> the devil's what, to be quite honest, you have always been that. It's just that we never made it official until just recently. But that's what you've always been, at least to me. He smiles. Goes. I, I, I knew I liked you. Okay. <laughs> Bearer of the standard of the gavels. Okay. Still think we should stay with the arbors, but that sounds pretty nice. Yeah. I mean, stick around with us. I think you'll uh, find that there's a lot of perks to uh, sticking around, and you know, maybe loosen up a little bit. But we'll work on that. <laughs> I mean, we're still, I wouldn't say excellent, we're fugitives, maybe? But that's yeah. a nice title. <laughs> fugitives, 100%, at the very least. Uh, wanted criminals, one of them. <laughs> Guess he gets stressed again, but he tries to, like, smile through it. Like, he's really trying to play it cool right now. <laughs> Will, look, Will uh, it looks more relaxed, like, almost <laughs> like... <laughs> He cares too little. This he probably should be more concerned about that. But <laughs> for now, it's bath time. Hey, uh, can I get a quick like? What is Nar a god? Who is Nar? Definitely. So Nar is the god of fire. So he's like the okay. um, he's a true god too. And so the true gods are the gods that were pretty much born gods. Uh, so he is the god of fire. Uh, he's one of the shaper gods that helped for or kind of create the lands. Uh, of Kazia, and he's also uh, Ateria's patron god. Uh, so him is along with uh, Senso, the god of war, and kind of in a different, really unevolved sense, Thana is one of the other patron gods, the Thana, the goddess of death, but she just, she is completely neutral. She doesn't really do anything. Where Nar and uh, Senso are both fairly involved in the fabric of Ateria. What other, like, creatures outside of, like, some of the maybe drakes, like, would you say were, like, natural creatures or animals that they were, like, taming around here? Uh, so for taming, or did you want to kind of just see what's around? I, no, I don't want to tame anything. I'm, I was just Oh, no, uh, like... the ones they've got that are kind of, like, tamed animals, or do you want to kind yeah, of just yeah. see what's in the area as a whole? Just what's in the area, yeah. Yeah, give me a survival check. Oh. Also, I should mention it, because uh, it's been mentioned before. Uh, Orog and Nar are rivals, correct? They are. Yep. But when I, rivals, I feel like is a friendly way to put it. Nar and Rog hate each other. <laughs> so Nar is an actual demon? Well, uh, Rog's a demon, or infernal god. Uh, Nar is divine. 
Uh, did you say nature? I'm sorry. Oh yeah, nature survival, your choice. Yeah, both. Right. Looking around, uh, yeah, you see a lot of different kind of creatures. Like even like with this land, it seems like it should be fairly inhospitable towards like life, pretty much, with how hot it is and how uh, kind of the flames have shaped it. You see a lot of life making its way in there. Um, you see that while well, they've got like some fire drakes that are tamed, you see fire drakes in the sky above, kind of flying over, untamed and wild, uh, kind of just making the roost within uh, the volcano uh, in the distance. Uh, you see salamanders plenty in the area. Uh, you even see kind of traces, too, of what you would guess are kind of fire elementals, uh, the elemental creatures kind of within the lands as well. Uh, it's surprising, like, and this is probably Belric's kind of first experience with kind of like this scorched land. Uh, and probably, I mean, it doesn't seem like it should support as much life as it does, but you do kind of find those creatures and even some of the hardier plants that can kind of grow within a lot of cacti and things like that that can uh, been kind of or evolved to grow with uh, the fire and the flames and almost feed off of them versus being taken out by them. Sure. Okay. Um, Belric, while you're wandering around, maybe you come across Wisteria on, like, the outskirts of the monastery, and she's kind of, like, looking up at one of, like, the two-story buildings, and there's, like, a small window up there. She's like, Belric, do you think this is climbable? Um, trying to get to that window up there. Just to, not, not now, just trying to gauge out a, a plan. What do you think? Uh, what is in that window? Um, I think if I mapped out the the place correctly, it should lead to a hallway that'll let me connect to the room right above uh, the section of the library that only the elders are permitted to access. <laughs> you could have really <laughs> tricked me there. If you're just like, yeah, it doesn't matter. Uh, <laughs> Syria, I don't know that uh, this isn't our home. I don't know that we should be going where the elders are going. I mean, but it's a library full of all sorts of information. Like, why would they keep it hidden away? Information should be for most people. <laughs> um, could Bear potentially help you get onto the, you know, hit the second floor? Um, get maybe. Get kicked out of this place in an hour. <laughs> <laughs> I, still, I still have some more planning I need to do. Um, I'm not ready to execute yet, but when I... But if he gives me a boost up, I think that'll be enough to get me to that spot. So I'll definitely let you know when, when I'm ready to actually keep my plan and Bear could help me out. That would be great. I can enlarge my animal. <laughs> <laughs> I would, uh, I'll pat him on the back and then I'll take a, I'll uh, take a swig from, do we still have the keg? We gotta be a little bit left. Shaking you, up you keg. A little, uh, I haven't been keeping track of yeah, You guys still have a little bit left. We'll have to figure that out again. Keep track of that sometimes. We'll we'll we're gonna have to refill it out here, but yeah, um, <laughs> I'll take some real foamed up beer from there and be like, "Yeah, you just let me know what you need. Information shouldn't be uh, kept from anyone." And then I'd go back to kind of like having a sip of beer and star like Drake gazing. Like I've never seen these just Drakes flying around. It's crazy to me. So I love it. Yeah, and Wisteria will probably take notice of you like paying attention to all the animals as she kind of becomes unfocused on the thing that she would like so she'll focus on for a second um and she says yeah there's a lot of interesting creatures around here um Mokalin doesn't have too many native creatures of note uh, a lot of people there are um from other nations and there's a lot of invasive species that have caused all sorts of problems um not to mention the amount of the island that's dedicated to industry and cities, but there's certainly a lot of creatures that do uh, find their way to live around there. And this place kind of reminds me of that with how hostile it seems on the surface. And yet there's quite an abundance of life. I don't, I'm of the belief that no species are invasive. Um, but yes, it's always, it's always great to see places like this. And I'm sure Mokulin, which I'd like to see at some point, 
where you know life finds a way. Bell, I think like you'd probably get super. Like, you probably want to see Mokula, but you'd probably be like super angry at the end of a Mokula trap. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Oh, because it's so industrial. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I I guess I wouldn't really know of that though, yeah, right? Yeah. Or maybe I would. not Yeah. Like oh, it's well, just like you know that they're industrial, but kind of with the what yeah. Derek kind of mentioning, you've not been there, so like like peeking through. I mean, I know how how kind of industrialized it is. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> uh, I'm sorry when when you said I'm under the belief no species is invasive. I had this very distinct image of my head of like a lionfish staring fa like face first directly into a camera. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. You guys are able to uh, kind of look around uh, and kind of get a chance to relax after your, your kind of your harrowing day on the road. Uh, but eventually, though, you do hear the gongs chime and you do see a bright golden flame kind of burst out from the middle of the courtyard. Gee, you know, that signals dinner time. Uh, so, like, you see kind of the, the, the students that are training kind of finish their drills. Uh, you start to see people kind of flooding from the dormitories and the kind of the residential areas heading to this large uh, kind of almost cafeteria style, almost meeting place cafeteria style uh, area within the monastery. You see there's a big like hearth in the middle of the room uh, just kicking up flames like providing like it almost like when you, when you see it at first you feel like it's going to be uncomfortable in here. It's already warm. Why would they have this huge fire in here? Uh, but as you go it kind of the same pleasant warmth. Uh, you definitely you can feel it uh, but it doesn't, you're not sweating, you're not uncomfortable. It's just kind of like almost a, a familiar, almost homely like warmth uh, as you come into it. Uh, and as you guys come in, you do see Olga kind of runs forward to you, goes, it gets like he's smiling, but he's trying not to fidget. Like he's trying to, he's trying to look like he's actually doing a job right now, but he, he's not succeeding super well. Uh, he's still fidgeting, uh, he, and he kind of comes up, and he tries to stop at attention. He goes, Melissa would like you to dine with her. Uh, he kind of points up to the uh, kind of the at large table at kind of at the far end of the, the, the area, and he goes, I, I will show you to the way. Uh, please follow me, guys. Uh, and you see, like, he's trying, like, to really keep it, like, proper and not, like, run like he usually wants to do. But he kind of, like, almost skip walks. Like, he does, like, a couple steps walking, but then kind of goes a little bit faster uh, as he leads you guys to this table. Uh, and you see kind of already at the table, too, uh, Beric Anderson is there. Uh, he's not wearing his armor. Uh, he's wearing kind of a, a nice tunic, uh, still kind of keeping with uh, the, the blue and whites. Uh, he definitely represents the Co Codinia colors. Uh, next to him, though, you also see even Sarah, uh, the wood elf. Uh, you see her green hair, or kind of silver hair is pulled back into a ponytail tied with a green ribbon. Uh, and she's wearing kind of a, a nicer dress. Uh, and you see the, the the last of Squad 7 that's kind of seated at the table. Uh, you see Drix, uh, the uh, kind of Drix Vince, the, the green dragonborn. Uh, he's kind of wearing just... A uh, simple tunic, uh, and he is sitting kind of next to them. Uh, but you also see kind of Melissa uh, sitting there as well. Uh, and she looks and goes, Please sit. Uh, he was very happy to hear that you were here, Jeet. He has this menu worked out. It should be uh, an interesting affair. But before we get to business, and as you guys see, you get him. Uh, Olga does come and kind of brings you guys like water uh, and does uh, set out some of like the monasteries. The monastery does drink, uh, but they make their own alcohol. Uh, so you do see it is kind of like a refined sake that's pretty like it's strong. Like uh, it's one of those ones that like they, they doesn't feel like moonshine sake, but it's definitely you can tell like it is. You only need a few glasses of it, I'll say. Uh, with that, uh, you see they set those both on the table uh, and begin to start bringing food out. Uh, but Melissa goes, Gee, before we get into the business, I saw your armor earlier. Did you force that yourself? I, <clears throat> yes, I've been learning. I, and um, 
making more extensive armory and armaments. Uh, the sword I have purchased, but the shield of mine, uh, the armor, yes, uh, this is, I, I made it, I forged it, yeah. It seemed good work. Well done. We'll talk more on this later, but I do feel you may be ready for the trials. Thank you, teacher. I think that I might be ready for it myself, yes. <clears throat> but to the rest of you all uh, who have brought, well, the emperor, but let's speak plainly here, brought this bomb to our doorstep. What are we to do? That is a good question. Uh, truthfully, we just need a little bit of sanctuary while we figure out our next uh, course of action. I don't expect it will take very long. Uh, I don't want, we don't want to impose on your time or your safety, but uh, well, we just want to find a way to wake up the good emperor. So if you have any knowledge, any sort of divinations, any sort of uh, information that you could share, we would be greatly appreciative. Uh, but truly, all we want is to just stay here for a short while. As I said before, Jeet is always welcome within these walls. And you all are friends of Jeet, so you are friends of ours. As long as you hold to our her respect our traditions, we will allow you to stay here uh, undisturbed, even if armies come looking for you. The Emperor, on the other hand, we can hold him for a while. We have our healers examining him now. Uh, they've, the Squad 7 arrived a little bit ahead of you, uh, and they've looked him over. They have not found any sign of, kind of health issues. Uh, and Beric mentioned that Wisteria, you looked him over as well and found that he was in perfect health, and we have seen that as well. Uh, we do believe the theory that you all posed, and our healers are verifying it, but it seems he does not have his soul. Furthermore, it's still a theory at this point, but our lead healer believes his soul has been split into multiple pieces which is not something I've seen before from God or man. But we should hopefully know more. Uh, it will take time, but we are doing our, do, doing our best to make sure that we can reignite the Emperor's flame. That is interesting to know. We have seen a, a great deal of people doing experiments and all sorts of foul soul magics recently. So can't help but wonder if those things might be connected. I'd be curious as well. We've we've heard tale of the fathomless and others using souls for benefit, but compared, and you kind of see like it, Melissa is a teacher, and like you kind of see like that teacher kind of mindset kind of coming in now. And she kind of leans forward a little bit, and she goes, "Well, to make a fathomless, to make an undead creature, uh, with, with twisting its soul." complicated more than the average villager could do but if you have a talent for magic it's something that let's say it doesn't take an arch mage to figure out to even consume a soul and burn it to utilize it for magic similar it's not too hard once you figure out what you need to manipulate because it's just taking the soul and souls we found are power if you can just convert that power to whatever your whims are it takes training, it takes dedication, but it's not something that's unheard of. But to split a soul, to have multiple pieces go different places, that is powerful magic. It could even be godly magic. Is it possible that multiple gods try to vie for the soul? And like tug of war, only the rope 
toward the sun there. You see, she kind of like regards you mockery and still a friendly expression, but like her eyes like don't like just like glare at you, but they kind of narrow a little bit, kind of taking you away to taking in your holy symbols. It he go... shrinks a little bit into himself <laughs> from it, and he gives her like a, a bow, but immediately like accidentally like hits a piece of himself like his chest or his elbows into the table, so he shoots back and it looks even smaller. You see, she. Face kind of softens a little bit as you kind of like clearly shrink back, but she does go we're still a little bit sterner than it was before. <sighs> that could be, but I do feel that the only the gods that would truly vie for her soul are the infernal. But I cannot say that for certain. The gods play their games, but Nar, unless. Unless it is from the Lumoxians or the Illuminescents, he, he typically does not have too many enemies outside of the Inferno. But I'll, it'll be interesting to hear what is going on there. But our best healers are working on him, and we hope to figure out, confirm, uh, we're, we're confident that his soul is missing. But we're hoping to confirm that it's split and find where the pieces are. But we will take some time. Uh, teacher and Barrack and companions of both Gavels and Squad 7, I have an idea. It is not quite yet fleshed out enough to be a proposal, but I say that we use this time to broker an agreement between the three factions to ensure that none of them make a play for the Emperor's uh, the emperor he stops himself from saying the emperor's body uh <clears throat> while the emperor was close to thrax thrax had the most prime opportunity and because there was no sufficient force there protecting him it would have been war and who would have, whoever would have opportunistically claimed the um sleeping emperor uh, would have then had the power, but now that the Emperor is protected and no one can at least immediately stake a claim, this is our window to sign a sort of um, agreement or, or to convince all of the factions that no one should be making a play for the Emperor. What do you, what do you think? Melissa nods and kind of gives you like a, a small, like, not like a half bow, like kind of a sitting like half bow. She goes, learn wisdom on your time on the road that is a great idea we we're actually planning on inviting some of the leaders of the representatives from the factions to hear on neutral terms to discuss what to do with them if the gavels want to try to convince them to, to for no one to lay claim to them, i will make sure that you have a seat at the table She looks towards Beric, like his thoughts. Specifically, I, actually, he'll speak up as well. Beric, you are intimately aware, I have been told, with at least two of the factions, and the Gavels have had dealings with the third. Do you think there's a possibility that this agreement could work? You see you kind of Beric potters it. You kind of see him look... Uh, kind of Kind of like shoot his eyebrow up and look at David Sarah, and she kind of gives a nod as well. And he goes, They may. Uh, the loyalist, the, the, the chancellor, he kind of like, you see, like he pauses and goes, This is between us. The, the chancellor's an able administrator, able governor, but he is not, he does not have the vision of a leader. He will try to do whatever he can to preserve the status quo. If it looks like everyone else is agreeing that the emperor should not be retained, I believe he would follow. The imperialist, it depends on who they send. Prince of Terza, he is a talented warrior, very, very likable. 
but he is young, he is impulsive. If he feels he's been disrespected, if he feels that people are putting up barriers, he is liable to get hot and try to take his way by force. But he's rarely ever sent on his own. Uh, guys seem to get uncomfortable a lot of a little bit. Typically, he's with uh, his mother. Does a lot of the the, the ru ruling, shall we say? Uh, but also, your mother as well is often seen at court and helping make decisions. I, I would not be surprised for negotiations if they sent Lady Akina of Sonoru or your own mother to these to discuss them. But if they do send the High Prince of Terza, it, it could be a fraught discussion. <laughs> At the description of High Prince of Terza, there's a certain confidence that comes to Mockery's eyes. But when uh, it's mentioned Jeet's mother, Mockery gets a little nervous looking <laughs> over to Jeet to make sure he's all right. Um, um, I, I, yes, and uh, we um, um, have... Uh, sorry, well... Can someone else talk uh, about Thrax? What, what do we think about Thrax? Uh, Thrax was a neutral party for a long time, and his decision comes from seeing that these two parties, he believes that they do not have the capability and they lack the vision to move a terrier to a peaceful future. Well, uh, as peaceful as you can expect Thrax's uh, uh, vision of a terrier to be. I believe he can be convinced, at least in my opinion, and I would hope it is either him or his right hand he would send. Uh, both are reasonable, intelligent, and in my opinion, honorable people. In my analysis, Thrax's decision to make a claim for the throne seems like one of someone backed into a corner. He had these two options, the Loyalists and the Imperialists, and neither met with his expectations of honor. And so he was forced with no other option but to take the leadership himself. Um, I think presenting him with a better option, namely getting the Empire, Emperor uh, soul back in his body, uh, will be hopefully enough to convince the Thrax that there is another way. But I don't know how he's changed in the past several days, having now been in this position of power, mobilized his army to accomplish things, and receiving the support of his clan. Um, that can do a lot to a person. There's also the central issue we're not talking about. Um, we have the Emperor's body, yes, but that that's only part of the issue. Yes, it is our goal of the gavel's goal and squad seven's goal to reawaken the emperor but at the end of the day these issues arise more from the fact that these powers are trying to establish a new ateria or keep ateria the same or try and <sighs> they want control and until the emperor himself is awake and brings things to balance, just the idea of bringing him back, I do not think will be enough. They are going to want more. So we have to think about that. Uh, these are two, two of them are actively at war. One is backed by a god of warfare. We have to really put our heads together and think what can bring them peace? Wisteria, you need to look into truly the inner politics of these two factions, more so the Prince Thrax, I believe much easier, and I believe it's possible, but we must target the central issue here. More than the sleeping emperor, it is a terrier they want. Of course, the emperor's body is a way to get it.
I, I'm sorry. I believe I spoke out of turn. Melissa kind of gives a nod and goes, You do speak some grains of truth. This, I've heard that Thrax has taken over, or has been named, should I charitably say, head of the great lord of Clan Thanza. But I'm not sure what his positions are. I know the loyalist, I know the chancellor, look to preserve the emperor's last status quo, building a terrier, but keeping it out uh, of global affairs. Where the imperialist look to fulfill the emperor's one-time dream or last dream of one empire, one world, one emperor. <sighs> Sinso, the god of war, siding with them does make things interesting. Nara so far has decided to stay out of this conflict. He, he kind of see her lean in, she kind of waves Olga off. This will not leave this table. But he has not been pleased with the Emperor. He feels he's lost his inner fire. And he's not pleased with this conflict. He almost seems morose. He's not communicated with the priest. He's not really left the plane of fire. Many are looking for a decision, but as of yet, we've not been able to see what he wishes. Was there any evidence of this behavior prior to the Emperor's disappearance, or nice. has it been exclusively afterwards? He's not been happy with the Emperor for nearly a century. He feels he's lost his fire. Nar believed in the, the dream of one empire, one world, one Emperor as well. In a terror along the way, has come up with a new vision. But as I said, this cannot leave this table. The people would not like to know that Nar hasn't been behind the Eternal Emperor. Uh, I'll kick the that's a that's a bombshell right there. I can, <laughs> I'm gonna. I mean, I'm gonna like as someone who's not that in depth in terms of like the politics of it all. Like, I tried to ignore it, but like that's a bombshell. <laughs> I'm gonna kind of like shrug over at Jeet to see if that's like. I don't know if I need to make a check, but like, is that something that he was aware of, or like, no, is this something no. that's bombshell to him too? Yeah, you see it very clearly. He's like big blinking at the table, just trying to process. Yeah. Up until now, he just thought everything was aligned and loyalty to one was loyalty to all, to Ateria, to Nar, to Emperor. It was all the same thing, and now uh, it's it's too much. It's, he's going to need some time to process. So, your patron god, for a, a century, has not been backing the Emperor. That's what you said, yes? He's not stood against the Emperor, to be clear. He's just not happy with him. Mockery looks terrified. He just looks terrified, and he... he he looks over the jeet, sees, sees him processing, and then he looks over to, like, Wisteria. He's looking around the table just entirely, uh, just, like, trying to find anyone he can look to for guidance in this moment who isn't also blown back by this. And he, uh, the first one he'll look to is Wisteria, just like, What does that mean? For for us, for Ateria, the, the Emperor, what does that mean? Is Barrack here? Yeah, Barrack's here as well. Uh, he, he does have a puzzled expression on his face right now. Yeah. Will just uh, looks exasperated. 
That's going to make things here a little bit harder, isn't it? <laughs> so Shiryu looks at Mockery and says, I think that this means I have a lot more research to do. Oh, I, oh, apologies, I'm not from Ateria. If what I say is here is blasphemous, I mean no disrespect. I, I be believe like many others here, I'm starting to go into shock. Uh, I... If the gods have not been backing a tear... Would that mean it might be time for a new emperor? You see, she kind of like... First, she kind of goes, like, starts to shake her head, and you kind of see the hair kind of falling around her horns, but she stops herself and she kind of, you see, and you hear her repeat like a maxim, like a, a phrase that you hear her repeat, like, pretty often within the monastery. If you don't know an answer, you should not guess. I oft, I thought to deny what you said, but I, I can't say for certain. I will say, though, that Thana does not renege on her gifts, and that gift comes from Thana. So, so I, I cannot say what why he's in this coma, why he, his soul may be split, but Thana never takes back what she has promised. It, it could be that, and again, this is a guess which runs contradictory what you just said, so I, I apologize. What if what Nar said is true and the Emperor has truly lost his fire? What if this is from some prerequisite no longer being filled? What if he's changed? He's here kind of puzzled through then goes <sighs> that that would be a grave day thing indeed. I'm hoping our healers can tell us more. But I, I do sense dark tides coming. And as I said, we will hold, you have sanctuary here until time ends. We will hold a tear for as long as we can. But we cannot stand up in armies. We cannot make a tear inhospitable to the Burning Dragon Monastery and the Flame Keepers. But, uh, and as you see her say that too, uh, G, you see a kind of a familiar face come like rushing out. Uh, and you see he has like this big tray of food. Uh, and like, probably like more important to G, he has like this big tray of mochi. Like, uh, you see he has like one, like, balancing it in two hands, like the tray of food and like almost an equally large tray of mochi. And he throws that like right in front of you, G. And this guy, he is like, um, a monk, uh, he's got like a little sh like chef's clothing on as well, uh, but like a big old smile. Uh, and you see G, like he rushes up to you, uh, and like he throws the, the motion right in front of you, and he like, like gives like a friendly but like hard push. Uh, they go, keep it up with the train. It's, it's, it's good to see you. Uh, you look a little scrawny though. Scrawny. <laughs> <laughs> Me, uh, uh, with the arrival of the mochi, he's kind of forgotten. Uh, he gives him a hug and pats him and says, look, look check it out, check it out. Uh, he stands up, look, look, I'm not wearing the, uh, the the bottom half, but this is the armor now. You think a scrawny person could wear this armor? It's full, it's, it's plate, it's plate. Just touch it. I made it. Kazuo, oh my goodness, it's so great to see you. Uh, did you keep some mochi aside for me for after dinner? I, I saved. I, I think you need it. I saved some. Uh, but and he, kind of, he looks at, like Melissa, who looks like not displeased yet, but definitely like <laughs> wearing down. He goes, "Okay, this may not be the best time. I saved you some in the kitchen. Hey, we'll spar later." Uh, <laughs> he gives you like a big bear hug back, uh, and he kind of sets down this food, like a lot of like uh, a lot of like. 
meatless dishes where you do have like some fish, little spicy noodles, uh, soups, uh, just bread aplenty, uh, kind of along with uh, the water and the sake, uh, and then some fish and spicy, like a fish and a little bit of pork dishes in there mixed in as well. Uh, he kind of throws them all on the table along with the moshi, uh, and he like gives you one more shove and goes, hey, find me, uh, and then dips back to the kitchen. Got it. Uh, and as uh, he's serving the people around him and then himself, uh, and he starts eating, G realizes for the first time that this feels like coming back home more so than going back to his parental home would feel like to him now. A uh, little bittersweet, but the food is so good. He just pushes that thought aside. Try these noodles. Oh my God, it's just the, the way he cuts the scallions. He's so good. No, uh, apologies, Melissa. You were saying. Uh, you see, she's kind of like picking at her food as well. She goes, ah, it's good to have you home. Ah, but I will take your suggestion. I'm going to invite the leaders of the three factions here. Uh, and you hear Barrett kind of speak up and go, um, also, I would appreciate it if you would invite Quasir, uh, at least some of his representatives. He's put a lot of work into the Fight for Peace tournament. I don't think he will come to Nara's grounds himself, uh, but I do know that he's brought some clerics with him that may make the journey and present his viewpoint. Well, you can see Melissa nod and goes, okay, well, I will invite them now. Uh, hopefully we'll have representatives in a week and a half. Until then, you all have free run of the monastery, uh, feel free to train with us, eat with us. Uh, this is Jeet's home, and with you being friends of Jeet, this is your home. Uh, and Jeet, take some time to rest. But after a week passes, I do want to speak more about your trials. I feel this could be the time for you to become a war true war priest of Nar and join the Flame Keepers. I defer to your judgment, Melissa, teacher. Right. She kind of gives you a bow back. Uh, but for now, that is enough of these dire issues. Eat, drink. Uh, our hospitality is yours. Uh, yeah, she kind of opens it up. Uh, you guys are able to kind of just relax, eat, drink, uh, hang out with uh, Melissa, uh, the, the members of Squad 7 that are on the uh, kind of the, at the high table. Uh, you do see, kind of looking out, though, Olo was definitely kind of sat far away from the high table. Uh, by And you'd you guess by Beric. Because <laughs> like, uh, Olo, you hear him, like, he is downing Saki. The, like, the monks, like, some of the monks are really enjoying him. He's, like, getting people to start singing songs and trying to make it, like, a more, like, tavern-like environment. Uh, and you see, kind of, next uh, to him as well as uh, the last member of Squad 7, uh, who is just, like, Kind of quietly drinking next to him. Uh, Akaro, like, doesn't really seem like he's saying much. Like, well, Olo is getting people singing and getting people get playing games. Akaro is just kind of sitting there eating and drinking, like, not really looking up, wings folded in, just kind of quietly sitting. Mockery's going to call out the Belric. Belric, my friend. Uh I once thought myself a good drinker until I challenged a priest of Corsair. <laughs> I then spent an entire week in infirmary from all that I drank. That, that cat over there, <laughs> singing, he is truly one of the greats. Uh. And I have seen you drink too. Would you like to challenge him? I would oh, not join no. you. I do not want to die. <laughs> oh no! But I will cheer you on. I, I. He's never seen a a dozen dwarf drink before. Instigating. <laughs> <laughs> Nor a, a hound of Codinia. I'll start. Damn it, B! I'll join you. <laughs> <laughs> it's all it takes. 
I'm running over there while I when I hear all that stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Love it. You see an Olo, like he like he's got like both the sake they put in the table in one hand and like his own personal jug in the other hand. He is just like swaying and singing. Uh and like some of the monks like, are looking disapprovingly, but a lot of the monks have like joined in, especially a lot of the newer recruits. Like he's he's fairly like fairly charismatic, but definitely a drunk. Uh but <laughs> so you, you come through, uh he goes and he goes. Not squad ten. Gavels. <laughs> how how are you? <laughs> he looks up. And goes. You're squad ten. A barrack ass. But gavels. <laughs> um. We would look over. I mean, one of the things I want to do is I want to look over to Jeet, and just like I want to see if like you know if he's insulted by what's going on over here. If he's just like smiling and like you know like ah, oh, they're having fun like is this like uh he keeps giving contemptuous looks to olo and no one else <laughs> <laughs> you see olo looks over as you guys come uh and he like reps his jungles would you like a drink Many more than one. <laughs> I... We seek to challenge you to a drinking <laughs> competition. Oh, monk of Corsair. Oh, because your pat his belly goes, This is a good day. All right. Uh, glasses, glasses. Uh, and like you see him like start taking glasses from like around the table uh three like taking glasses from people uh, around the table pulls three out dumps them out and goes okay <laughs> competition what type of competition drink the most um who can uh drink the most and then run the fastest i'm good at that one uh flip cups we, we honor kosia today for peace I say, and uh, <laughs> look over at the bell, Rick. I heard dwarves are natural sprinters. <laughs> uh, he'll take a uh, a coin out and he'll kind of like flip it right into his glass, and he'll be like, "All right." He's like, "You chug the drink, and then you flip the coin into your glass." You see, he nods. Just, I like this one. All right. Uh, he pours like from his own jug into three cups. Uh, it sets up uh, other cups on the other side. Okay. Three cups. We might need one more. We need another him? person. Oh, uh, competing with him? Yeah. Are we? Is it me and? Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah. All right, Wait. never mind. We're good. Yeah, yeah. Wait. So it's. Mockery and Belric on Team Gavel, and he just yeah. has himself. Oh, okay, you guys do teams. All right, yeah. You'll see, like, it's kind of slow at first because as you guys see, like, G, like glaring at uh, Olo, you see, like, Drix kind of looking longingly over there. Like, he's like trying to keep polite conversation at the table. Um, and you kind of see him, like, looking, and he kind of, like, Kind of like, kind of slowly start scooching out his chair, like that kind of like that awkward. Like, I don't know how to leave this situation. And you see Barrick like look, glares at Olo, looks over at you guys, glares at Mockery too, and he just says, "Drix, just just go, just just go." <laughs> <laughs> and you see Drix like bound over and join Olo's team. Barrick, watch this. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> you hear him just like. G, you hear Barrick sigh and go, Melissa, I apologize for Squad 7. <laughs> but with that, uh, you get your two teams in place. Uh, let me get some stats for Drake's. Where did I put those? Uh, sweet. Uh, yeah, so with these, do a Drake's and Flip Cup. So we just do a uh, little we'll run around of this. So biggest thing, going to do Fortitude Save to kick it off. Uh, Olo drinks some pretty potent liquor. Uh, he's a drunken, mo- uh, drunken master, so he has to get pretty tipsy with a little amount so he can get in that stance. Uh, so you're going to have to make a DC 20 fortitude save. If you pass the fortitude save, you're good. 
If you critically pass it, you're going to get a plus two uh, to the next roll. If you fail it, minus one. Critically fail it, minus three uh, to the next roll. And the next roll, since you guys are playing uh, quarters, uh, athletics. Uh, we'll say athletics, see how you can bounce that quarter in there. Uh, and then, uh, since it's a team effort, yeah, pretty much who the the highest score uh, on the athletics checks as a team, we will add them together, wins. Uh, yeah, Olu, uh, I'm out of my beer, but uh, Olu pours uh, pours it in, uh, and he goes, "All right, three, two, one, go." Uh, and he chugs his, uh, Drix chugs his a little bit slower. Everybody give me 42 checks or saves. Oh, Drix man. is struggling. <laughs> oh, hey, you Matt may want to hero bro? point that. Do we, we you use this point. what we're using the hero point on? <laughs> I'm hero pointing my drinking. Fuck yeah, dude. <laughs> I'm hero pointing my drinking. 29. <laughs> No. Ah. All right. Uh, Mark. Oh, yeah, you rolled. Sweet. Yeah, so you guys, like, I don't know if Drix is uncomfortable. Drix, uh, Drix probably just had to eat, eat it enough before he went over to play the drinking games. He is, like, struggling. He's looking really, like, he's, like, feeling a little buzz now uh, as he's going through a little slur to his speech, a little sway to his step. Uh, Olo chugged it like a champ. Uh, but, yeah. Mockery and uh, Belric, you guys both like drained it, feeling good, feeling uh, pretty all right there. Uh, so you guys will both get uh, a plus two to your roll, or no, you guys just succeeded, you didn't crit. So yeah, you guys will have a straight roll on this one uh, as you guys get to your athletics check, where Drix is going to have a minus three to his athletics check to get it into the cup. Uh, let's see, oh, oh, oh. go ahead. <laughs> Mockery, after... Downing it, we look at the bottom of the cup, like, and then say, I mean, no disrespect. A second round. I see we're all doing well. -y. Most of us are doing well here. <laughs> this should be a true test of our skills. <laughs> Drix goes, I, I, I'll, 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 I'll drink another. And Olo goes, You stay there. Okay, yeah, another <laughs> round. I'll drink two. Really, send something up to go say. For the gods. <laughs> Sweet. So another round. The DC does go up by two. Uh, so twenty-two, forty-two to save. Do we do the athletics checks right now, or are we doing more uh, chugs? Mockery's trying to get another drink, and I think to throw. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, I'm down. Cool. <laughs> Uh, so, oh, <laughs> we need that one. I'm using that hero point. <laughs> so, who crits the seed the first one? It's regular to see the second. Beric crits the seeds, uh, and Mockery to see the second. Uh, so, Beric, Olo, both get to add a plus two uh, to their roll. Uh, as you guys get into the athletics check, uh, Drix a minus three. Uh, so, yeah, Romeo Athletics. Olo is going to fail. You get plus seven. Oh, no, I don't. Dang. That's not including the uh, plus one. I do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry, Wisteria. <laughs> <laughs> what a bunch of what a bunch of jackasses we are! <laughs> oh, sorry. Putting yeah, hero yeah. points on a drinking game that's meaningless. <laughs> <laughs> but you guys do win. Uh, <laughs> Olo, you kind of see like after he chugged two of uh, his kind of high boat thing, he chugged him like a champ, like even quicker than the other two. Uh, but he got like, a little cocky, like after he like drained two as you guys drained your one and tried to like no look it and just missed it. Uh, and you see Drix, like, his aim would have been right on the mark if he wasn't drunk. Like, it, is like, it looked like perfect form, uh, except, like, he, like, slipped a little bit as he got it through. Uh, but uh, you, you guys come through, uh, beat Olo and Drix uh, at the Drinky game. Uh, and you guys see that like, Olo frowns at it for, like, a second, he goes. 
didn't think that would happen, but hey, so we'll, have a, rematch. Here. <laughs> we'll have a rematch at the festival of the, the fight, the peace, the, the tournament. Peace. Did you see like Olo? Like, <laughs> you know, and I'm like, what? And what? <laughs> Furious, and he, he all looks a quiet squad seven. Uh, no, we're 10. Oh, this is a nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> but with that, though, you guys were able to uh get like Olo and Drix, so, like, are just down to continue the drinking, the fun, uh, and trying to get more and more of the monks into it. Uh, before I move to the next scene, t- team table, uh, Will with Stereo G, what are you guys doing? Falling in love with Mochi? <laughs> yes. <laughs> and the chef does a, a really good job. Kazu does a really good job with the Mochi. Like it's flavorful. Uh, I, I don't think Will has anything specific in mind that he wants to do right now that I can think of, but I do have a question. What's like, can I get a sense of the size of this place? Like how big is this monastery? Yeah, it's like fairly large. Uh, you see kind of in this hall, uh, there's probably like space for about 300 people. It looks like there's probably about 250 uh, within. Uh, so uh, kind of a pretty like decent size for the monastery. Uh, and you know that they've got kind of space for more because a lot of the monks like Jeet are out of their pilgrimage or kind of aiding with the empire or just kind of even exploring the world of Kazia. Right. Yeah. Other than that, I can't think of anything else. Will specifically needs to do right at this moment. Just, you know, being the his usual self, making conversation, getting, becoming best friends with this person he just met. <laughs> <laughs> you guys, I thought all the uh, food in Ontario was was hot and spicy. Why didn't Why didn't you tell me about this? <laughs> oh, it's great, isn't he? Isn't it? Is? Oh my God, Kazuo, I have not yet found anyone who does it better. I this place is about discipline. Talk about discipline. This guy, he would be, I would say the world's best chef. Yeah, easily, easily, right? Uh, <laughs> uh, and the, the the shock that Jeet was in just prior seems to have worn off just, just because of the food and the drinks, the sake, of course. Yeah, we started just shoveling Mochi into her mouth and. She gets like a piece of it stuck on like her tusk. It's like <laughs> you know, here. And normally she's very meticulous about those kinds of things. I think okay. So as Jeet is uh, composing himself like a lot more and getting back into it, um, he says, "And you know, with like our problems and stuff, uh, even if um, well, the news that Molly said gave us uh, and all of that, like that's that's all that's all right. But like we still." the emperor still needs to be brought back right but just because we don't want there to be a civil war the I mean, team so sake is hitting him the forces of ateria should be facing outward not inward uh, it's the wrong state of affairs to have uh, armies against each other so he's i mean you regardless of what I had said and and you will have to make of course, if if there has to be a successor, that's all like a whole other thing. But like, what we should do is we should just make sure that the, the country doesn't tear itself apart. So I I, 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 still, I still think that like getting the emperor back, like that's that's still, um, noble noble core. Uh, more more sake, more sake with stereo. <laughs> <laughs> sure, uh, facing armies facing outward. You mean like invading places? We don't want that. Huh? It, he, he like blinks at her a few times. Well. <laughs> I mean, what I'm saying is, saying, what I'm saying is, is, it's better than them facing inside. Is what I'm trying to say. That's, that's all. <laughs> is it? No, but I, Will wouldn't say that out loud. But I'm just thinking. <laughs> like internally. This is this is the inside <laughs> voice that like she doesn't yeah. usually. He's wise enough to not usually say out loud. Mm-hmm. Perfect. But you guys are able to. Drink it to hear G kind of like let us tie down metaphorically and uh kind of have his hope coming and relax a little bit. Uh, I get to hear the thoughts on that side. It, it's 
kind of a very welcoming environment uh, with uh, the, the monks and the, the students of the Burning Dragon Monastery. Uh, as you guys get to eat, drink, uh, you see people giving demonstrations of skills and uh, just kind of a chance to relax. Uh, with that, we're going to move into the downtime section with the crew. Uh, you guys have a week of downtime. But we're going to take a quick five-minute break uh, before we get into that piece. So we'll come back five minutes, get into the downtime side, uh, and hopefully another little bit uh, with this session after we get to the downtime piece. Uh, but yeah, so come back in five minutes. Yeah. Welcome back, everyone, to part two of session 12 of Pandemonium. Uh, the crew has made their way to the safety of the Burning Dragon Monastery uh, and has worked with Melissa to... Go to plan to invite the leaders or at least representatives of the three major factions of Ateria uh, to discuss peace, but uh, to discuss peace, to discuss what to do with the Emperor uh, and his body, and hopefully take take that uh, peace off the board. Uh, while they're doing that, though, that's going to take at least a week and a half for uh, the messages to get out and leaders to come back. Uh, so, with that, you guys have a week of downtime. Uh, what do you guys want to do for your week? Uh, and with that, too, you guys are now rank three of the faction. Or you rank, let me look at it again. I think you're rank two. Uh, yes, you guys are rank two of the faction. Uh, you got four members. Uh, and with that, faction members can assist you guys if they have that skill. Uh, so they can give you a plus one to your skill check in case you want to add them to something that you're doing. Uh, and don't forget, you have an overall faction round. Uh, you guys are at the Burning Dragon Monastery. Uh, they do do trade with the car, so you can easily get goods you need. Uh, so if you need to buy anything or things like that. Uh, overall, not the largest place, uh, but definitely a place where you can get some things done. And while you guys can't really leave the facilities right now uh, for this one, it's kind of a good one, especially if you have anything internal for the monastery you want to do or anything overall uh, that you want to kind of spend your downtime on. Uh, Will, I don't know what you're thinking. Uh, but one thing Rashanael will let you know uh, is uh, you guys talked oh, in game like about three days ago, uh, but on a game, uh, but a couple weeks uh, with that uh, about looking for blessing, kind of seeing if you could find any hide or, or kind of trace of her. Uh, and Rashanael will let you know uh, that if you do spend a week, uh, she will try to kind of use her own divine might and see if she can find the light of blessing. Uh, of a blessing of San, how do you pronounce that? San now? Sandrio. Sandrio. I'm sorry, uh, I finally found the spell I was looking for and I did not catch the end of that. Um. <laughs> <laughs> uh, sweet. So, so if you spend a week, uh, she will kind of, uh, kind of go into a meditative stance with you uh, and Will, uh, and she can see kind of what she could find out or blessing. Hmm. Okay, so that that could be something I do with my downtime. Mm -hmm. uh, All right. With that, as well, you're ready to go. Uh, what does everybody else want to do for the downtime? Uh, what's everybody think? You got a week, uh, so anything you could fit into a week. I. Oh no, you go. First. No, go ahead. Go ahead. I have a plan, and it is fourfold. Uh, the first two things is more of a request uh, Mockery would give to one of our followers, Antajit. Uh, the first one to one of our followers, our set chef, who I unfortunately forget the name of, other from the fact that it starts with an O. Oh, Boro. Boro. Uh, Boro? Oh, Boro. It, did not, it did not start with an O. Mockery is asking him to get the recipe for those emojis. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't no way we're leaving here without that recipe. Uh, second request Mockery would give to someone would be to Jeet, and that is uh, Mockery would request uh, armor like Jeet's. Uh, of course, uh, with, uh, hopefully uh, for Mockery plans to put his own little players on it, but like half plate armor. Now Mockery, I'm going to give you a spoiler here. Your archetype is very well known for their armor. Oh, so that <laughs> I thought I was gonna have to find it myself. And never mind, then we good, we good. <laughs> In that case, uh, last two things. Uh, the first one is something Mockery's actively doing. The second thing is more so opening him up, just doing something. 
Uh, so I'll describe the two things and uh, you can tell me if um, if they're incompatible to, to do in the same week or if he can't do them in the same week. And that is... Uh, the thing he's opening himself up to is challenges from any of the monks uh, of this temple. Basically going and, and saying like... Just opening him up like, anyone can challenge me. Ho test your skills that you've honed. Uh, that those philosophies of Nor, how they hold up in the field of battle. Just like, if you want to spar me, you can. Please do. Like, Mockery is a duelist, you know. After getting the permission from G, it's it's less of a point someone out and say, I'll do you more like, I I take any challenges! <laughs> Uh, cool. so that... Oh, sorry. Oh, no, go ahead. Uh, what's your second one? Uh, Mahri wanted to see if he could recruit somebody, uh, into the Gavel's faction. And depending on... Because uh, I don't know if anyone else wants to recruit the Bard first, but I also have someone else in mind, uh, like, that Mahri can recruit if someone else wants to recruit the Bard, or Mahri can recruit the Bard now. Uh, go with the one you're thinking of initially. What are you thinking of? Ah, shit. Hmm. Uh, I, I will say, though, in the case you want more time on that, uh, the recruitment will definitely take a full week. I see. In that case, uh, so would the opening, Mockery opening himself up to challenges also take the full week? Uh, if you want something else small you wanted to pair that with, uh, but other ways we'll kind of do that as like a little bit of a. Uh, not, not a work week, but yeah, definitely kind of like you going through, get to try to train with them, spar with them, fight with them type thing. Let's double down on that then. A full week of like uh, sparring and fighting with the followers of Noir. Uh, this is going to be a week of... Because Mockery always dedicates a fight or a sparring to one of the gods. This is going to be a full week of dedicating to Rog. So, open. How loud? Unfortunately, <laughs> I am like, how can how he, he does it every time. That is your like, warning I, that this is a bad idea. No, like, he does it every single time. Like, if need be, I can give like a little intro mockery, but do to say things like, I come here as a follower of rock, not as an enemy, but rather a whetstone you can sharpen yourself. I come to spar. I come to fight. I do not come to kill. But yeah, no. He uh, every time before uh, before spar, we're just like I dedicate this combat to Rob, the Lord of Fear and Fury. <laughs> so, You're gonna uh, get kicked fear. out of this place even faster. <laughs> even faster. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, you got mockery being like wrong. We stand here looking to like steal forbidden knowledge. Oh, yeah, you and you see like initially like, it's a friend of dojo and just jeet said people like to to trade and spar uh and yeah you got a few people kind of interested like if you're fighting style just kind of seeing a new fighter somebody new on the block to spar with the first time you yell out i dedicate this to rog like, you see like they like, the, the oh like the very friendly ones kind of look, look a little bit like shocked but still eager to fight you but you see others kind of like looking away from their own training and things like that and kind of lining up uh you do say they, they they do look dedicated to kind of bringing you down a peg. <laughs> uh, but with that oh. though, uh, yeah, they, they let you trade with them. Uh, you get to kind of get some sparring with them, kind of seeing uh, their styles. And their styles are kind of a lot of them. Uh, some of the heavy armor ones are reminiscent of G, kind of utilizing their spells and their combat. Others are kind of like just more like focus on the more martial aspects. Uh, and even others too. You get some of the more kineticist side where they're just bending straight fire at you kind of mixed with the martial arts uh but one of them though uh, and you see like this guy and uh, he's like you see he's like he's, he's still in training uh but he's completed like his pilgrimage he looks strong he's like not, not the best their monastery can produce but definitely one of the best that's kind of like hanging around and willing to rise to the bait for lack of a better word on that side uh you see he comes through uh you gotta see Brush back, uh, his kind of flowing robe, uh, and you see him kind of 
get into a stance uh, and he goes, you have sanctuary here? I don't care for Rog or his followers. He's a brute, a warmongering brute with no, no knowledge of honor and the chivalry of warfare, just the brutish aspects of war and all the barbarity that goes along with it. I will school you in the righteous fire of true war. I agree with you for all of that, save for the fact that Rog knows no honor. He is a savage and a barbarian, and that is beautiful, but he knows honor. He is a black tusk. And I seek to become a black tusk one day too. So on the honor of the Black Tusks, I fight you. And you see he goes, nods and goes, he kind of reaches into his pouch and he brings out, let's see. Mockery is silently like a praying under his breath, just like, please don't be one of the kinetics, please, please, I, the, not the fire ones. <laughs> you see he reaches into his pouch, brings out a couple of coins, uh, and he goes, I see Makesh's chain around your neck. Do you want to make this interesting? It would be blasphemy if I declined. Perfect. You see him throw his coins out there. And basically what we're going to be doing on this one, we can't describe how the fight looks, uh, but we can contesting uh, athletics checks on this porch. Athletics. Are you not going to athletics? No, Mockery is. It's just he's only trained. With... I did not know that. He'll be yeah. fine, maybe. Yeah. Probably not. Mockery's very strong, but I always imagine to basically describe it Mockery's big, he's strong, and he can sw swing his sword very good. But if him and Jeet were to get into an armlet wrestling match, Jeet would always win. <laughs> That's how I kind of imagine that the, like the strength. Like, He's strong in battle, but if you 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 get him into like a, a wrestling kind of thing, he 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 gets, he's, he's he's not winning that. So we'll do two out of three. First one's athletics. Second one you call it. Third one athletics. All right. All right. And how much gold is being bet here? Uh, and behind the scenes, I'm giving you the earn income option for the week. Uh, oh. So if you win, uh, you're going to get. Uh, well, it depends on how well you win. I uh, get anywhere from uh, a s nine silver pieces up to uh, a gold piece, or at the very least, you could lose two silver pieces. All right, I'll take it. All right, you see him kind of get into a stance. Luckily, he is not one of the kineticists. Uh, he does kind of a stance similar to Jeet's, but this guy is like all no shield. He is all focused on movement and fighting. And he kind of comes in takes his stance, uh, and you see he gets into uh, the, the Phoenix stance, you see fire starting to emerge around his fist, and he just starts throwing, like, quick jabs at you. Uh, and he throws his first athletics check. So give me an athletics check. Mockery. I, I can't. I can't beat that. Okay. Oh, no. <laughs> so you just like you see yeah. he's not one of the kineticists he's like a, he's doing Kicking a mock mockery phoenix stance and he's just jab jabbing just like he's like you just see fire and fist in your face just like repeatedly just like almost rope a doping you there on that one he takes that first round second round mockery what do you do what do you uh how do you try to take the fight back I can't describe what, how Mockery's looking after that first round. Oh, for sure. He's looking rough. He just got his ass kicked. He, he, he's clearly like roughed up. The fact he's still standing is genuinely a miracle. Uh, he, he, he's probably a little bit on fire. <laughs> and he changes the grip on his sword from like holding it like this to like almost clutching it close to him. 
which is like how I describe like him using the versatile piercing trait, but also the fact he's clutching his sword like, oh, you're <laughs> one of the good ones. <laughs> uh, so for this one, Mockery, I'd actually like to use the lore skill, the Infernal Gods here, specifically more to call into Rogue, the Black Tusks, and the combat styles therein. As Mockery really does try to emulate it and show like what these guys are all about. Alright, yeah, give me an Infernal Rogue and contest it against his athletics. Nice! <laughs> Okay. And that's really oh. good. Nat 20 on that one, too. Oh. Yeah, he's coming in like, can I say, I, that strategy worked from the first time. So he just kind of keep doing it, kind of just jabbing that fire in your face. Mockery, what do you do to kind of turn the battle to your favor? It goes from like, Mockery is like almost a little bit afraid, but that fear, he feeds into it to turn into fury as he goes back to holding his sword like this. And he truly just like, screeches out and fights like a like a barbarian like all in no defense just pure savage might zeal just rage fear fuel fury it is where before mockery would at least try to defend He'd take a hit. He'd take the hit. He he keeps on coming though. Even th past hits that would just really should bring him down. He just keeps on coming. And I imagine as as cool things are, those rolls were very close to each other. So dang, it, it, it was close. Perfect. So this is the last good. roll. This will determine how much you get. And I forgot to say this is per day too. Uh, so you get either the Nine silver pieces times seven, or the one GP times seven. Uh, with that, so this will kind of determine where you wind up from uh, nine to seven, or nine to nine silver pieces to one GP, because you got both a crit and a crit fail. So you're kind of like th this roll yeah. will kind of determine where you end up on that table. Uh, so mockery, uh, this is gonna be another athletics check, but mockery, what do you do to kind of get in this last round? At, at this point, Mockery is exhausted. He is beat to hell and back. And as much as he wants to keep swinging the sword, his arms are tired. And, it's, and he's more like dragging it behind him as he is using teeth, claw, and tail at this point. Everything he has left in the tank, just trying to match this guy. Match and exceed if he can. You do? Oh! Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yippee! So you see, like, he came in, like, cocky, especially that first time when he, like, throwing the fire in your face and the punches and just kind of just beating you down just quicker than you could react. Then he got a little scared next time when you come back with the Black Tusk guy. Uh, and you see, like, he, he's, like, he, his fighting style is, like, it's like fire. It's, like, rapidly approaching, aggressive. Uh, but he was he's trying to be cautious that last round after you threw him off his game. What do you do to like uh, to not uh, non lethally knock him out for it? Trying to be cautious, he was looking at the sword. Mockery comes at him. Uh, he doesn't full on mollick him, but he <laughs> bites him by the face, followed by his tail coming up to grab him by the leg, and he like forces him down and uh, keeps him there until he taps out. You see, he kind of gives a quick tap. Uh, and he kind of looks up at you and he go, like, you see, like, for a moment, like, anger. And you can see, like, almost sparks, like, in his eyes as he, like, looks back up. Uh, but then you see him kind of, like, just, like, kind of recenter himself, take a breath. Mockery will offer a hand to get him back up. And, and you see, as he finishes that breath, he kind of, like, for a moment, you see, like, he just wants to, like, reject it, like, kip up and like jump up as himself but he does take the head uh he does give you it's not like a low it's not a super low bow but it's definitely a respectful bow uh and he goes that was enlightening i'm not respectful <laughs> god but you are a true warrior black tusks <coughs> oh, oh i swallowed smoke <laughs> you are an excellent warrior and 
I will be feeling this for a while. Anytime you'd like to spa again, I am open to it. And I'm glad that this place that my comrade Jeet comes from has stock like you. And give him a pat on the shoulder. To honorable, to us, honorable warriors. To honorable warriors. Uh, you're going to see him pat you on the shoulder. Thank you. With that, too, uh, was you'll earn 63 silver pieces, um, which is like six gold and three silver pieces. Heck yeah. Sweet. Who wants to go next? Uh, I can go next. Um, right. So, first off, either in the monastery or in a Kara nearby, are there. Would there be anywhere I can like buy a magical item, or would that take downtime to like find? Yeah, uh, you could definitely kind of. Uh, you you can't go to Arkham, or you you you'd know you shouldn't leave the monastery. I should say, mm -hmm. uh, but you, there's definitely kind of monks going between a car and that they could definitely like take a gold and bring something back. You don't need to use downtime for that. Okay. Um, oh, is it um? Is it? It's not uncommon or rare, right? No, but it is magical. Okay. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, no worries. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then I have a I think it was you said the scales from the dragon that we fought in the pyramid. Um mm -hmm. was a, an aquamarine with is worth fifty gold. So I would like to sell that and then probably one of the monks that G trusts the most. Um maybe Kajula when he or Kajula when he goes to buy more uh food supplies. Um Send along, I'd like to send 75 gold to buy a spacious pouch, if that's a possibility. Oh, yeah, definitely. To buy a what? It's a bag of holding, but it's a remastered oh. name, I presume. Um, yeah. Yep. We'll call it a spacious pouch for the thing, but it's a bag of holding. I, I, I know why they had to do the OGL stuff, but I like the old names better still. I thought it was like a spacious couch, like a therapy couch. <laughs> I was like, all right, that's... <laughs> like, right. but yeah, yeah. so you, have, you you can definitely kind of trade in the uh, aquamarine. It's it's treasure, so uh, they can definitely get the full value for it. Uh, and Bora will go along with uh, Kazo. Uh, actually, how do you say it? Again? I think I'm Prince pronouncing it. Kazo, yeah. Oh, Kazo, perfect. He'll go along with him because uh, mockery uh, and probably Loki G too. Uh, I've asked him to get the the mochi recipe, and he is. Tagging along with him, just kind of hanging on the guy's every word. Uh, and he'll, he'll definitely go out and pick that up for you guys. Cool, okay. Um, and then there's a few other, like, uh, like a repair toolkit and then some predator's claws. And I'll do the math on that later on, yeah. No but, um, for my actual downtime, I want to try to gather information around the monastery to see if I can find a weak spot I can exploit to get into the Forbidden Library. So that something like maybe one of the elders is kind of not careful about where he leaves his keys or they're just, I can watch the shifts and like find a time when it, it's not well guarded or anything that like, not necessarily a straight in path I can walk in, just something that like, okay, this is where I can start building a plan on how to get into there. Definitely. With Wisteria, how does she usually gather information? Is she the one that Kind of talks to people, just kind of looks around, kind of uses their observation. How does she kind of go about trying to look for these weak spots? I mean, this is kind of her whole thing. So she has lots of different methods she uses, but her primary method is a lot of like observing patterns and recognizing like what are people's habits, how do they move around, who are people, like what are what are the, the social networks in the area, and how do you like who trusts who, who's friendly with who. Um, and using things like that to like follow the path and identify, um, you know, where that weakness might be. Perfect. Before I roll this, I will say, uh, this one, you're not gonna get caught for anything, mm -hmm. but if you do get caught trying to break into the forbidden library, that could danger the, the, that will endanger the gavel's reputation and sanctuary status with uh, the the yeah. burning monastery certainly she's um i mean done. she's not stupid she's gonna 
weigh the pros and cons as she learns more and more, but she's going to push at this until she it's explicitly clear to her that either she had she has zero chance or she can do it without any risk. Um, All right. So, Sweet. Yeah, definitely a lot of gathering information first. Give me a perception check as you are kind of going through and trying to find the best way to kind of infiltrate the Forbidden Library. And I, I suspect that's going to be her um, on the case thing too, right? Yeah, I can add that bonus in. <laughs> Mysteria does have all her hero points. She does. <laughs> but this might be a good excuse for me to have her realize, oh, this is not a worthwhile endeavor. Um, I mean, you, I guess you did say that, like, just gathering information is not enough for her to get caught at anything. So I think I'm going to let that roll stand. And So you maneuver around the, uh, the monastery, kind of trying to see kind of where the gaps are, kind of who who knows who, who maybe is lazy with their keys, who who has this information. I, you find a lot of jeets, pretty much. Uh, you find a lot of people that are very dedicated uh, and observant. Uh, and you kind of see, like, as you wander around, like, nobody really suspects you of anything, but every time, like, you're trying to, like, kind of slink and kind of observe and things, you'll see either Olga or one of the other pages or young uh, kind of monks will come up and go, Mysteria, do you need anything? Uh, are you lost? <laughs> uh, it's just overly helpful, but you just see kind of like you notice they're very observant. Uh, they are definitely people that are trained to kind of take in the world around them. Not saying infiltration's impossible, uh, but right now, Wisteria, you don't see any ends uh, with that crit fail. You just, uh, mm -hmm. it's, you, you, you see, it's, it almost feels improbable to you right now. Yeah. And, you know, if, you know, as the, the days pass, like if any of the other party members uh, see her around, like she's visibly frustrated and you see her like, you know, in that space where she gets super focused and like trying to like work out all the probabilities. And she just, it's like, you probably assume she's like trying to figure out stuff about the Emperor's coma and just like not <laughs> able to figure out, but like not at all. She's not focused on that at all right now. And, but yeah. Actually, she, I gotta, I gotta ask. Is Wisteria writing all this down, what she's doing, and her intentions of why she's doing it into her, like, reports? It's a good question. Um, I like to think she has, like, the the series of notes and, like, documents that's the gavel's history that she shares for you with the rest of the party. She has a separate notebook that she keeps on her person all, on her, person all her time that's, like, her own self notes and everything and that's where she's putting it so it is written down it is somewhere but it's in a place that's a little bit more secure that probably the rest of the gavel isn't as aware of um i think that definitely fits i think canonically though i think mockery is the only one that actually reads the reports because yeah, i think no, I even said that jeet doesn't really even read the reports if i remember right is that right jeet <laughs> uh, i like to think that he skims them. Which <laughs> <laughs> were the highlights? <laughs> yeah. Perfect. Yeah. So you go through the week. You just it's like nobody's like aggressive. Nobody's like trying to like ward you off. Uh, but you see, like they are definitely like aware. They're focused. They're they're fairly dedicated. They're like they're, they're uh, an order all about passion and kind of like exerting that passion. Uh, into an or in an orderly fashion, which I didn't mean to rhyme, but it did. Uh, sweet, uh, Wisteria. Before we move on, is there anything else Wisteria wants to, or that's your week? But is there anything else Wisteria wants to do or say before we move on? Um, let's see. So I guess if uh, if now is a good time for her, she she did a little interview with Will uh, once before, um, and she still wants to do that with other members of the gavel um let's pick that one up next session okay we got one more thing after we do downtime i want to do today and i don't want to keep people too late <laughs> <That's not good. laughs> we'll definitely get that next session though before we get into uh jeets and mockeries kind of archetype adventure we'll say all right well that's it for a then.
Uh, Beric will Jeet. What are you guys thinking? Uh, Jeet is going to spend the week retraining a feat, and he will request Will's help to Ooh. test him in his retraining. Okay. So, specifically, he wants to change one of his cleric feats to get uh, another domain initiate, uh, <laughs> the Perfection Domain's first focus spell, which is about maintaining a clear mind in the face of uh, magical influence on the mind. Ooh, okay. I see why you would want me then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so... Uh, over the week, like he will, you know, re retrain it, and he has the monks and the, everything else to just meditate and, and focus. Uh, but if you're okay with it, uh, any three, we, we can do like three different spells and, and then see um, what happens, how, how well he resists. Uh, and uh, I'll say just avoid command. Uh, everything else, I feel like oh. this could handle <laughs> command was the first one that came to mind hold on uh okay because i don't think i can handle command just the way that this ability works because i have to spend an action to kind of calm myself mm -hmm. yeah and uh, monks will definitely aid you in kind of the training lisa kind of helping you focus yourself and finding your center uh and you kind of just see even um kazu will, will like like when are you meditating and like trying to do distracting things? Like you'll start like banging plates and all that, trying to see if you keep your focus. Uh, I gotta say, I feel like the occasional just distant. I dedicate this combat to her. <laughs> yes, yes, <laughs> that is it's that good. is challenging him. All right, when it like comes through the window, the like open windows, there's definitely this moment of ignore it, ignore it. <laughs> Followed by like a deep, like, you can hear like a deep breath and sigh collectively across the campus. <laughs> but Will, what spell are you bringing to bear? I mean, I have a few of them. You said you wanted to test it on different spells, right? So I can try Fear, uh, Charm, and Phantom Pain. Ooh, I like all three. Let's do it. <laughs> all right. It, Will would be like kind of shocked by this request. Be like, you certain about that? <laughs> all right practice. practice makes perfect very well uh i think the first one that he would do is charm because it's the least sort of scary <laughs> i have to cast that from my want my uh staff that i have oh okay uh for any viewers i came across to this last session or not uh and geez, it's a little harder for you for a little bit uh spells cast from the staff do you have a plus one to the dc uh so uh go at it well oh actually i forgot that so that's cool <laughs> <laughs> i won't be able to do all three of them in one day actually <laughs> unless i unless i choose command um because it's, I it's, it's over a week it's over it's a week. yeah it's over a week yeah, yeah. all right so Okay. There's right. the there's the spell in the chat. All right. So the first save. Okay. <laughs> Chris, <laughs> sorry. Uh, all right. That was that. Right. Eyes. 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 Too many eyes. Just. Charm. Charm, charm by fire. doesn't oh. by itself like show you uh like Roshan. I just for some reason oh, just right. will yes. looks beautiful all of a sudden. <laughs> just the light you, you can just the right. sparkle. Yeah. The 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 sparkle <laughs> in his skin is brighter. His hair just looks curlier. He, he's like it's suddenly like a different art style. Suddenly like if this was a cartoon <laughs> like. <laughs> will did. Did you do something with your? Oh, okay, that no, is just you. It's still you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, right. Yeah, that's cool. Um, and then the next thing uh, that he would try uh, is going to be fear. And now this is the time when you actually get a glimpse of. Guys. Well, <laughs> Rashanael. Uh, not entirely, but you sort of like suddenly like 
a shadow path. I don't think I've ever, I've never cast this on any of y'all before. So the first time any of you have seen it, but you see like a shadow pass over head and you like look up and you just, you, you don't see many eyes. You see one eye, like the size of a planet floating up overhead with thousands and thousands and thousands of wings going far back into the distance. You can't even count possibly, you can't, you can't even possibly count how many of them there are. And it is just this eye is watching you, judging you, revealing all your secrets. <laughs> Terrifying. That's Will, great great grandma. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. That's, that's part of her. All right, give us a save. Uh, oh, do you get? Oh, do you get another correct success? That's different. No, I. Oh, I'm oh, not seeing. Oh, I, have to, I'm, I haven't put it in the chat. Yeah, my bad. Oh, okay. I'll just All right. Ooh. Okay. <laughs> Lot yes. Of critical successes and failures this session. Terrified. <laughs> Terrified and oh, oh my god, that makes me fleeing. So even okay, yes. Yeah. So G like takes off. This is his safe space and it has just been violated by an eldritch being of unfathomable <laughs> horror. <laughs> and so he like rushes into the uh, inner sanctum and just keeps running and running and running until he gets to his room. So that's just, that's going to be his whole first turn because uh, I can't do anything against the, the fleeing. Uh, it's just when the that ticks down and we get to frighten two, then he will try and um, calm himself with the perfect mind effect. So all it says is I get to reroll with one action. And then see uh, what happens. I, yeah, see what happens. Nice. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> what is going on tonight? <laughs> oh, it's the Marshall's aura. I think that's also bumping me up. Uh, I run to <laughs> where I run and hide behind <laughs> where Mockery's fighting. Uh. Help! Oh, I did. <laughs> oh my God. Uh, okay. Oh, all right. No, it was just uh, a hallucination. That's all it was. It was just a hallucination. And then he goes back to Will. He's like, great hallucination. Thank goodness that's <laughs> right. all it was. Illusion. That's that's yeah. all it is, friend. Like, that's, meanwhile, that's for a minute, like, Will was just kind of, like, standing in the courtyard by himself, like, well, <laughs> uh, <laughs> that doesn't feel good. Oh, no. <laughs> that doesn't feel good. I imagine my sister is saying to his job, I yell. <laughs> just like looking up to, like if, again, like if this was a cartoon, just looking up to it, like, well, <laughs> that doesn't feel good. <laughs> but eventually, just Jeet comes back, <laughs> looking perfectly fine and unbothered. <laughs> All right, last one. All right, what's your last spell? All right. The last spell I'm casting on you is the most intense of the three. It's Phantom Pain. This one will actually do damage if you fail it. So. <laughs> all right, all right. Let's do it. Oh, success. No, literally yeah. the exact number you Plus need. <laughs> zero. Okay, takes full initial damage, but no persistent damage, and the spell ends immediately. So it's like... <sighs> okay, so you still see the same view, and then, like, suddenly, like... As you like look up at uh Rashanael, like tears start like involuntarily, like tears start dreaming streaming down your face, your nose starts bleeding a little bit. It's it's like some sort of pressure being put on your psyche. No, 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 it's okay. I'm back to the good now. Oh my god. <laughs> I, I just need another mochi. I'll I think we're good good enough training for today. Thank you. Uh, you, you all right there? Uh, do you, can I help you like i actually i want to cast heal on him like i feel bad <laughs> <laughs> yeah when you do uh yeah like it'll uh, the physical aspects of it will stop and you'll see like yeah he's, he's actually all right yeah I, I just couldn't control all of the stuff on my face that, that's all right uh, <laughs> yeah I, i'm real sorry about that i i know she no. can be no most of the time i can't even see her so uh <laughs> Will, no, thank you. He just puts a <laughs> hand on your shoulder. Thank you. That helped. That was good. Uh, and now I know what makes all of 
our enemies run away when you do that thing. <laughs> Thank you. It's it's cool. It's crazy because like when that happens, Will just kind of like stands still and just like looks at you menacingly whenever he casts those spells. But <laughs> it's like he barely did anything. But he's mm, a friend. Yeah, Will looking menacing. It's okay. <laughs> Russia and I L making an experience. <laughs> that's scary. Uh, so yeah, that's going to be my downtime. Uh, I'm swapping healing hands for domain disciple. I think. Nice. Cool. All right. Will Barrick, who's up next? You want to go, Will? I, sure. Um, on one hand, I know I should be doing research on the Emperor, uh, but I don't know how successful Will would, could possibly be at that. He doesn't really know anything about soul magic. You know, lit actually, no, he's proficient in occult, occultism, maybe. But also, blessing. <laughs> so, I'm this. I'm. I'm just gonna put this to an out of character vote. Search, try to meditate and contact blessing, or do we really need uh, the uh, begin the search for the the truth of saving Emperor Ater? Because uh, I, I kind of feel like that's gonna be like the the faction downtime, right? Oh, or is you that, guys, is that a separate thing? I will say that the um, the the priest of Nar uh, and the healers are all kind of meditating as well as working over them. Um, they are they're kind of on that case. So okay, then cool. Well, then I'll I'll devote my own thing. Okay, so first thing I want to do, independent Wait, of however do. the downtime action goes, I want to buy a spell scroll if it's possible. It's a second rank spell oh. called Guiding Star. It's a cool spell. I'm never going to take it like as an actual spell, but as a scroll just to cast once, I might do it. You call on the constellations of the night sky to guide a creature to the location where you cast the spell. Each time the target views the stars, it receives a mental nudge towards your chosen location, though it isn't compelled to follow. The target can recognize you as the source. If the creature goes to another planet or plane, blah, 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 blah. Um, so I can basically just make sure that wherever she is, she knows where I am. Okay. Aww. Um, Aww. That's going to be independent of however this downtime action goes, because yeah, I can't. Really... I, I think the scroll is going to be for a later time. Like I'm going to do whatever this is. If it doesn't work, or if even if it does work, we're probably still going to have to like you know actually find each other. Um, so yeah, here we go. Yeah. What do I, I have? A, do? I have a joke to make real fast. Yes. Please, <laughs> if it's ever brought to like Mockery's attention, Will is looking for his friend. Mockery would put a hand on Will's shoulder and say, So, you really have to count your blessings, huh? <laughs> All right, well, yeah, I'm sorry, I'm sorry that it's, it's the first time you told me your name. <laughs> They're not. Are there a... <laughs> Uh, I cast Phantom Pain on Mockery. Oh, no! <laughs> I can ask if there's an opposite of Hero Point. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, <laughs> uh, that's great. It's good. That was Just a got good, the one. Mockery's got a dad joke game down. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're, you're better than me. Good job, Mockery. <laughs> All right. <laughs> but you can definitely get that scroll. Kind of sitting probably with the same order Wisteria goes through uh, for her uh, bag of holding. Uh, and you can definitely kind of pick that scroll up or without any difficulty there if you pay the, the gold price. All right, it's uh, not it's not even as it's like cheaper than I expected it to be when I looked it up, so that's good. Thanks. Yeah. All right. Um. But yeah. So now, what must I do in order to commune with Rashanael and possibly Sandriel? Yeah. So Rashanael will let you know to you need to get a kind of a good meditative stance. Uh. So you need to like find a good spot that's kind of bathed in light. Uh. For Rashanael to kind of like connect deeply into. Almost a kind of celestial, not realm, but almost a celestial presence. Uh, and see if she can kind of find Sandriel, and then by extension, blessing through that realm. All right, I'm gonna try to find the highest point of this place that I can that is accessible to the public, like a rooftop somewhere, perhaps, or something like that, and just try That's to. You can admit. definitely find a rooftop. <laughs> I was gonna caution you against the highest point. That would be the mountaintop. Uh, uh, maybe not. <laughs> just climbs the volcano. Yeah, 
<laughs> you could definitely find a good rooftop that's kind of like facing towards the sun, bathed in light from the sun, as well as uh, the kind of the fiery mountain behind it. Uh, and as you're kind of bathed in the light, uh, and Will, actually, let me describe what does it feel like as a uh, Russia doesn't take quite control, but you kind of feel her influence growing as she kind of reaches out. <laughs> Will is not used to doing this. He, uh, in fact, spends a lot of his time fighting against this exact exact thing from happening. Um, he, so he doesn't like know what to do initially, but he just sort of like stands there for a moment. And he and he faces south because that's where Lumox is. He's like, "Does this help? I don't know." Um, but he <laughs> sort of like closes his eyes, thinks for a moment, and uh, tries to like just think at Roshan Ayala and be like, all right, I'm gonna need your help with this. And then he feels her presence looming and he just doesn't like fight against it this time. And like he, like I said, he mentioned before, he can't see her even most of the time. Um, so like he isn't, even, even though she's in his head, he doesn't actually like see her. But like this time when he opens his eyes, he looks up and sees the massive eye floating in the sky above his head. Uh, with the thousand thousand wings flapping uh, out of sync with each other, uh, blocking out the light of the sun, but casting its own light uh, that is uh, just as bright. Um, and uh, like it is, it is pure awe anytime anybody sees it, even in the best of circumstances. So like without even re like, I think actually after this is over, Will's gonna realize that he has fallen to his knees and has been weeping the whole time without even knowing that he's been doing it. Um, after whatever it is about to happen happens. <laughs> Perfect. You feel that, and, and it kind of sounds like Will's usually like not fought, but kind of like kept his own control away from Rashanael. Mm -hmm. Is that fair? Yes. Yeah. So you feel Rashanael kind of reaching, and, and as you give, she kind of reaches and takes, and kind of feel her presence is expanding in your mind. You see her above casting her own light. You feel that light grow brighter. Uh, and you almost feel the light grow so bright. You can't really see what's around you. You see this light. You sort of see shapes taking form. Will, give me a religion check. Oh boy, here we go. <clears throat> this is the time. This this feels like a hero point if I'm gonna if I fail it. So here we go. Well, go change yourself, yeah. We'll see. Uh da da da. Um uh, I'm thinking of like, can I get a bonus for? And then I couldn't finish that sentence, so I'm just gonna roll it. <laughs> All right, Ooh. that's pretty good. That's uh, almost sure as good as it could be. You reach out, uh, and you kind of see the light envelop you. You feel Rashanael take control, and you start to see shapes taking kind of taking place. Uh, you see, kind of like. You almost zoomed through, you zoom through the lands, kind of almost flying over it, and you see like this city. Uh, it looks like. And actually, before I finish describing it, Will, how, how, outside of Lumox and Codinia and Ateria, has Will been to any other countries? You're on mute. My bad. Uh, I don't think he's done. He traveled quite a bit in Codinia, but I don't think he like traveled to a lot of different places. He went straight from Lumox and basically traveled up the whole length of Codinia before he met the gavel. Uh, so I don't think he's been to a whole lot of places except perhaps, perhaps, uh, Dosen Federation uh, in like Urda area, maybe. But he he uh, mostly has spent time in Codinia since he left Lumox. You can but see he does have a pretty good society role. <laughs> he is well read. Perfect. As you kind of like the light blinds you and then takes shape, you see like this well-adorned town. Oh, not even well-adorned. You see this gaudy kept town. You see gold plating. You see this gilded rose banner hung over the city. You see just opulent displays of wealth that border on the obscene around you. But the, it's almost like a camera that's like shakily moving quickly. You see these beings, these people in these cloaks with the gilded rose and bloated on their armor, their cloaks, their shirts, kind of quickly falling to this light. And then you start to see it kind of fade out. And you see blessings. 
you see her moving, you see her casting, you see her kind of fiercely fighting, but not like she's fighting, she's in dire battles. It doesn't feel like she's fighting for her life. She almost seems joyous is not the best word, but she almost she feels triumphant as she is going through uh these gilded streets. And you hear Rashaneo's voice go. I have found blessing. I feel Sandriel's power, but Sandriel cannot speak. I am worried. The angel should always be able to speak. That's bad. Um, and. She, you said she's fighting against these uh, people with the gilded rose, uh, rose symbols. That's right. Does she have anyone with her fighting? You don't, and uh, and kind of looking at it, you can with Rashani outreach now. You can just see blessing and kind of the foes she's coming across. Uh, but she doesn't like she does not look worried at all. Like she looks almost like she's and Will. I don't know how Will reacts to this, but like she looks like she's in her element. Mm -hmm. I don't think. More... I... Yeah, go ahead. I, sorry, I, I don't think I I ever personally established this, but like, what is her fighting style? Like, what kind of what kind of magic does she use? What kind of weapons does she use? Of any, I don't know. I can't. I'm, I'm like thinking like I assumed that she would have similar abilities to Will, but I mean the wrath we saw clearly demonstrated that we don't all necessarily have the same powers and stuff. So I'm wondering like. Is that up to me, or do you want to decide? Or I don't know. Oh no! I've got, unless you have something great, I, I've, I've already got a thought. Yeah. Go for it. Yeah. So she is like, similar like magic to yours. Uh, so like you see her kind of casting uh, kind of these spells, and people running in fear, uh, manipulating their minds, even blasting them with searing light. Uh, but she does seem a little bit more martial than you, for lack of a better word. Uh, she has got a blade in hand, and some people she cuts down, some people she throws to the ground, and then blasts them with a searing light. Uh, she's she, she's definitely a little more on the front lines, we'll say. Is she wearing armor? No armor. Okay. Is she wearing anything that I might recognize? Oh, uh, with her, she's kind of like wearing a like simple outfit, like nothing like kind of like the the ornate, kind of the grandiose outfit you guys had to wear uh, on the, the luminescent island, or even you've seen the people Lumex wear. She's kind of wearing it's not armor, but it's practical. Interesting, and I don't recognize this place. I assume otherwise you would have said something. All right, you know, um... but if you uh, wanted to give me a society check regarding the gilded rose, you definitely do so. Sure. Sure, sure, sure. I gotta bring two things up real fast. One, a Star Wars quote uh, came to my head uh, when you said, but the angel cannot speak. Just like, is this a power that can be learned? <laughs> <laughs> and Not from a Jedi. Yeah, and then the second thing is like, another... Another uh, shot of people with the Gilded Rose. I said, that's the second time, Mockery, that's come up. I don't think you asked about what the Gilded Rose was. Let no, no, he, he's not brought that up <laughs> to anyone, not even this area. <laughs> so, Will, do you have a hero point left? I do not. I rolled a secret roll, so I have no idea what I got. Okay. You don't, unfortunately, you don't recognize the Gilded Rose. Okay. Uh, you, uh, it's vaguely familiar but just you're not sure who, who it represents if it's a minor faction or kind of, kind of who that is but yeah you do see it a plenty as like blessing kind of runs through the streets wait sorry you asked me if i had a hero point mm -hmm. i answered that wrong i do have a hero point <laughs> um <laughs> i don't know why i said no <laughs> I don't know what question I was answering, but it wasn't the one you asked. Um, well, you want uh, to use it? If yeah, because it I think seems if advantageous I save, for you if to I, use it. I think if, if I save DM it, asked you. Yeah, if, you if I think fun. if I if I save it any longer, I'm never going to use it tonight. So 
I would like to re-roll using your point. It's still on... a secret, so I still have no idea what I rolled. But some people use them on drinking. Well, you crit on this one. <laughs> oh, hey, I know straight people, I know everything. Point, hey. yeah, it needed to be a nat twenty to crit, but it was a nat twenty and it critted. So, <laughs> uh, but yeah, so yeah, you look at the gilded rose, and you recognize this probably like. I want to call it propaganda, but it was propaganda uh, with the luminescence and Lumox. That's the symbol of the Imperium of Mechus, the Gilded Rose. Uh, that's their the, the ruling family symbol. That's on all the guards, all of the soldiers. They wear that Gilded Rose, this golden rose uh, imprinted on everything. Uh, so you, you would recognize this is in Mechus. And with that Nat 22, you would see kind of like signs and symbols and kind of recognize some of the streets that she's running down from, I don't know, Will's read history books, but these her tales from people. Uh, she's in the city of Marin. Where, where is Mechus and Marin? Sorry. Oh, uh, so, uh, I'm ping it. Uh, so, actually, for anybody that's watching too, let me throw it on there too so you guys can yeah. see. Oh, okay. So, yeah. That's that's kind of like the, right, uh, of that's the... right, and I do know that uh, the just I don't actually was never given any information about this, but just what I know of Mechus and Lumox, they are not friends, not at all. Uh, uh, <laughs> so that's the place where they worship Infernals openly. Yeah. Uh, so uh, we, so for a second, Roshana, I was like, you should go join her and do that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, all right, so that's scary, and uh, I think uh, unless is there something else that I see? Do I see anything else? Nothing else crazy, but you do know she is Mechus, uh, and you could definitely tell she's she's in battle, but she's healthy. She's not worried, and she's happy. All right, that's the scary. Uh, well, <laughs> Will and Washington may have different views on this. Will, she's happy, she's healthy, she's doing what she wants to. Russian Yell? She can't feel Sandriel. She senses Sandriel's power, especially when Blessing casts something. But she can't talk to her. She can't hear her. Yep, everything about that is scary. Um... <laughs> <laughs> All right. I think Will sort of like wakes up back where he was sitting on the roof of uh, the monastery and like realizes he's like collapsed on the ground with tears running down his face and he's breathing heavily like. All right. Uh, okay. That's unpleasant. I'm glad that I don't have to see that most of the time. <laughs> uh, why does my throat hurt? <clears throat> oh, I was singing again, wasn't I? All right. <laughs> uh, <laughs> all right. Uh, well, I appreciate that, Rashana. Honestly and truly, I understand that ain't easy for you. And he like sort of struggles to say this, but he says, I owe you. <laughs> that you do. Sandriel cannot be heard. Her song cannot be lifted. This is a travesty. We must figure out what is being done. Right. I would very much like to find out what's going on there. And on this, we are aligned. I, uh, I want to see if I can find anything in the news about what's going on down there in the South. But that's probably for the next week of downtime. <laughs> and with that, too, um, we won't get into this right now, but I will say I did post some news. Marin was in the news. Oh, uh, yeah. I probably read that like weeks ago. <laughs> no, oh, I, I didn't see it. Uh, I did it this afternoon this... right before we started playing. Oh, shit. That's why I didn't see it. So we'll get to that later because you can find that out at the end of this week. But I did want to point that out. Uh, Bell, yeah, see this. what are you doing before we, uh, yeah, what are you doing for your downtime? All right. I mean, I got, I got two options. So no matter what, I'm, I, my downtime, I need to spend on dozen because so what's going to happen immediately is going to be, there's going to be a bird that comes, a bird that I recognized. Uh, it's a eagle. It's a black eagle and it's got red well, eyes. Well, if you're uh, your archetype, we'll have a whole quest for that. So you don't have to worry about that piece. It doesn't okay. will take a while to get to. Sure. Okay. So. Yeah. 
I won't do that then. Uh, I will simply craft some arrows. All right, yeah. What up, arrows? <laughs> or do, oh, do you have any in mind that you're building? I should say before. I will figure those out at another time. We'll figure those out and get to those rolls uh, a little bit later. But yeah, you can definitely craft some cool arrows. I think you were out of arrows last time, so probably buy some regular arrows too. Uh, but yeah, you were able to get that in. Got to get some crafting in. We'll we'll get into that a little bit next session. Uh, but that actually gives you a little bit of time because I was worried I wouldn't be able to get this last piece too. Uh, because you guys, as you spend your week, everybody doing their own thing, mockery, dueling the monks and shouting out to Rog, uh, making them a lot yeah, of friends. Fury! Uh, Jeet, uh, kind of refocusing his mind and learning a new way to connect. Wisteria, finding out that maybe robbing the monks, or not robbing, uh, stealing the monks' knowledge, which isn't robbing, but kind of a different way of robbing, may not be the best course of action and will finding out more about blessing uh and finding out she's got her own little revolution going in mechas but with that on the kind of the last days you guys are finishing up your pieces you hear this bellow like it is a magically enhanced bellow like it is coming from afar but you hear it booming across the monastery lands and it goes Cowards of the gavel, Commander Loke of the Fallen Sons challenges you to a duel of blood and honor. You have harmed us and we shall not let that stand. Are you cowards or are you men? Answer our challenge. It's super annoyingly. That loops. <laughs> that is no! uh, yeah, that's a pretty... <laughs> <laughs> just, just like after it's done. Oh man, maybe we should Cowards of the Cavalry! <laughs> oh. so, Do you have this? Loop? Is What's this that? A... It's a challenge from like the sky, I guess. From Oh not from the sky. It's you can definitely tell like it is it's magically enhanced. Uh, and uh, Will would know this. I don't think we gave his name last time, but I assume he would have introduced himself to Will. Commander Loke is the commander, the kind of the leader of the Fallen Sons, the mercenary company that you guys came up against last session when you break away from the temple. And he is just like it is on a loop, magic. Some some type of magic is putting it on a loop. Uh, and G, you would know this for sure. They the the Fallen Sons they can't get in the monastery. They can't step onto kind of the sacred land uh, of Nars Inferno and the Burning Dragon Monastery. So they are pretty much, they're probably out, you would know they're outside of the border just talking shit and yelling, trying to hope to get a response. As you guys think that through, I will be right back. So very visibly, Mockery's just like stretching like, ah, well, guess I gotta do another duel. No. <laughs> Uh, I mean, I, I, like, I dedicate this to Rogue. I've dedicated like probably fifty to Rogue. I I think maybe Vin Zero needs some luck. No, I want to use my sword. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and how do they challenge all of us to a duel? Yeah. All right. Like, do they help, have their own crew? help me visually understand this. Like, is this like? An entire like it's just like a small group of mercenaries, or is this like a big like? We, we I think I assume so. I I assume that it is a small group. Uh, Jeet has like half the pieces of his armor on as he's running around, kind of well, 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 uh, well. Where are you? What's up? What's I going on? <laughs> you. You hear it, right? And he's like putting a more pieces of his armor. On. I, I, we need. Yeah. Um, we have. We have to respond. Uh, obviously, of course. Uh, we're honor bound. I am honor bound. Our thing. Uh, could you please just uh, go out there and use your bull horn so they stop looping that thing? <laughs> Tell them we're right. coming. Tell them we are coming right. for the duel. <laughs> All right, I'll go. Let them know. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna head towards the front entrance and. 
try not to get killed with an arrow as soon as I turn the corner. <laughs> oh, the nice thing is you, you're all in kind of Nara sanctified land. There is a wall of fire separating you from them as they approach. Uh, you can see them clearly, uh, but they, they can't shoot at you and all this. You see five people standing kind of near the wall of fire, but you do see two troops or one kind of like kind of a company, not like an army, but like a, a company of men kind of standing to one side and you see kind of like a small unit to the other. Uh, and the company are all bearing the fallen suns uniforms. The the people, the five people in front, Will, you recognized Commander Leak, this rough, grizzled uh, dragonborn, with one of his eyes kind of taken out from one of the battles. He is standing in the center. Uh, you even recognize three of the men that were uh, kind of uh, fighting against you guys as you were escaping, two of the horse riders, and then one just of the bowmen that was shooting at you guys from afar. You recognize them in that group of five. Uh, and you also, on the other third group, you see kind of to the right, clearly away from everybody, they've got a, a banner up with the, um, not a silver unicorn, but it's kind of like, a, not a white flag. Uh, actually, it's a white flag, like kind of a peaceful flag. Uh, you see six people, uh, kind of just this phalanx of uh, heavily armored kobolds, dragonborn, and lizard, lizard folk. Uh, in the middle of them, you see arcs. Uh, General Thrax is second in command, standing next to the banner. Clearly, those segregated from the Fallen Sons under the <laughs> banner. So they're they're like they arrived at the same time, but they're like we don't know them. They're not with us. <laughs> their their challenge is not Thrax's challenge. We're here for we're here for a different reason. All right, I would call. I would cast Bullhorn on myself again and call that out. <laughs> Very well, we accept your challenge. Please stop the looping message. You are disturbing children in here. <laughs> you see Commander Lee Cloak looks like annoyed. How many people? How many, uh, how many are there? Oh, there's like a, well, let me, there's how a company. Of are, the Fall Sun's company is to like the left side. Uh, but there's like, there's a couple hundred people. On the left side. But there's five people near the Royal Fire, and then there's Ark's company that's kind of on the right side. So who did Will just challenge? Oh, well, then they, and MG would know this, and I had to run to the bathroom, but uh, they challenged you to a duel of blood and honor. That's an Atarian thing. Uh, that's super Atarian. Uh, basically, they feel disrespected, so they're challenging you to an honor duel to kind of recoup it. Uh, so usually that's, you have equal number of people, so they're not going to bring their whole army against you. Uh, and they're going to kind of settle it up. Usually uh, the person that challenged puts up a gold prize or uh, some type of prize. But uh, it's an honor duel, so some could spare it. Some choose to spare it and make it non-lethal. Some go for the throat and make it lethal. Uh, it's one of those ones that uh, you guys have already accepted, I guess, but... Uh, with Ateria refusing it for a just, refusing a just duel makes you look bad. So we just accepted it without knowing if they would be lethal or non-lethal? Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. Uh, like, well, G said we had to, so I went out and did it. I personally was like, hey, maybe I'm not blaming this, anyone. But... I was just asking. I just <laughs> oh, no, like absolutely. They... 100%. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> absolutely. Good point. Um, I'm just I will like, say, hey, uh, Wisteria wouldn't have responded to the call unless somebody went and like fetched her. Like, <laughs> <That's probably laughs> like pulled, hey. uh, pulled some earbuds hey. out and like kept working on her, let's her just, research. Let's just treat her like it's lethal and let's just win, you know? It was no. Maybe Mug for you to get Wisteria just like, come on, we have to fight. What, 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 what do we get out of this? Do we really need to? I'm ah, big. No prize. <laughs> Honor! A Valkyrie doesn't know about the prize. It's like, hey. <laughs> I need, go, I need go for the new shoe. Yeah, we got, we got enough of that already. Let me... I'm, I'm with Wisteria. Like, what are we doing here? <laughs> this guy just called plus. us out, and then we're like, all right, fuck him. We're going to go fight him. <laughs> they call us cowards! Happened. They call us cowards? <laughs> Whatever. We, you know, yeah, we got a lot going on. <laughs> we got a lot going on. Mockery. Uh, 
I think you're a coward if you accept the duel. Now, see, now you are a coward either way, so we don't need to do it. All right, can we? Like, we gotta have to do. <laughs> I'm fighting without you, and I'm fighting. So if I have to pick you up, I will. <laughs> I think we would. I think we need to battle at this point. You do All see right. the, the people of the monastery are like not staring, but they are evaluating you guys. It's just like the. Which do we prefer? And having to deal with this looping message? <laughs> or kicking out their friends if one of our members? Oh, we need to, we need to, we need to fight these guys. And we need to kill them. It doesn't matter if it's a lethal uh, duel or not. I don't, I don't even, I will, ki I will kill these people. I don't care about, <laughs> I am, oh, I am not going to non-lethal these guys. I'm going to kill them. <laughs> still at the back, like Jesus, still like, Putting on his armor. Yeah. You guys discussing battle strategies? Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh we're boy, gonna I kill can't them. wait to do another We're gonna kill these like guys. I always you better, do. <laughs> see, you better hurry up. We're gonna kill them. I suppose oh, with wait. the whole monastery watching, this would be a good boost to our, our reputation. So I guess I'll come along, but let the record show I'm not happy about it. Will has had the earplugs in the whole time and has heard none of this. <laughs> <laughs> But you do see as you guys kind of make your, it sounds like you guys make your way out towards the kind of the edge of the monastery. Melissa does follow out with you as well. Uh, and you guys see uh, kind of the, the five members of the Fallen Sons uh, with a general, Commander Loke uh, in the middle. Uh, and he will look and go, <sighs> and you see as like he looks, you see like them step aside and they like wheel Fourth, this person and Mysteria, this person looks super familiar to you. Uh, you see the human that was on the horse that you like should have fatally killed, but does look alive ish. Uh, you see, like, as they wheel him forth in like, this little makeshift wheelchair, he's he's there, he's alive, he's breathing. Lights aren't off. Uh, when was this from? I'm sorry. Um, oh, I think you may have been um, uh, helping the, the contractor at that point. Uh, we're staring at crit of this guy uh, twice, I think. <laughs> but lethally. Absolutely annihilate him. Yeah. Non lethally crit this guy or? Lethal. Le lethally crit the guy. Okay. So he's still Mockery alive. tried to give him a potion. NPCs typically don't have uh, death saving throws. Why? Just Why did any of this happen? Walker just kind yeah. of puts him like, Oh, I see. He got my potion. Oh. <laughs> I thought he... Oh, I thought he was alive. He's breathing? Uh, this, and to make sure it's separate for out of game. He He's breathing, but he looks fucked up. Uh, it looks like they've tried to like, heal him both magically and non-magically, but he's just not coming back. It's a very separate situation from a tear who's super healthy and his soul's <laughs> not there. This guy looks like his brain's not there. <laughs> oh, no. Tegan, okay. this is now a kick. The question, do the metal men still exist? The forge men? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Actually, check out the news. One of the pieces of news is about, or, about the guy that made him. <laughs> you know. Uh, hey, you know what? At least we know that this place is wheelchair accessible. Hey. <laughs> but as he wheels him out, you hear Commando Loke bellow out. We demand honor and justice be paid for our man that you unjustly robbed of his health and true life. We demand an honor of blood, a duel of blood and honor. Will you comply? Before anyone else can say anything from behind, she's like, we comply. Uh, Hold on, wait, how does this work? Is he fighting with, with, with you? Is this like a, I wouldn't call it a mercy killing because it's a duel. Are we, are we fighting to the death? Is this not, we accept whatever the terms are. And like, but is he fighting too? 
I mean, maybe we should discuss Going the turns the a little bit. Guy. <laughs> no, he cannot think. Our healers have tried to heal him. We've patched his wounds. But... I mean, he well, probably he wasn't getting turn. oxygen to his brain for quite a long time. That's that, super that, bad that's for him. That's what, uh, his brain is damaged and beyond our magic to heal. We demand honor for him, and we will send him off in glory after we have brought back honor to the fallen sons. You see, Commander Loke kind of reach behind him and throw this chest into view. You see it spin and open, and you see gold coins fall out. 200 gold coins. If you win, you take the coins. If you lose, we take your lives. All right, well, now we understand that whether it's lethal or not. Uh... Will looks like he just woke up, even though he probably <laughs> didn't. That's just how he's acting. <laughs> Wait, so I'm trying to... Sorry, I, I've been hitting the head a lot the last couple of days. So you're paying us to kill you because you think you can kill us because we didn't mean to kill him. I'm sorry, I tried to get the potion there as fast as I could. You hear oh, Ark, my dog. You hear command, uh, Ark's like Thrax's second command snort at that. Like he goes like before kind of like resuming like his composure. <laughs> and the only thing he says, and he looks directly at Commander Loke and says, You remember your deal with Thrax, right? And you see Commander Loke. Wait, like he aggressively waves it off. He goes, No thought of that. We will teach these people what the fallen sons can do. Yes, if by some miracle of Thana you survive, take the gold coins. We, but if we wait, I can't, no, I can't like spare your life. Or the life of your fighters now, because you've set up as a death match and doing so would dishonor them more. I don't want to. <laughs> I guess I'm going to kill someone today. Oh, All right, man. wasn't ready for this. Uh, fuck it, I dedicate this to Rog. All right, I'm ready. Um, he was rolling up his fancy sleeves. <laughs> here, we go, you... here we go, killing again. <laughs> It, you would know kind of how the duels of blood and honor go. Uh, it's kind of like almost like an old, like an old school timey duel. Uh, you guys meet in the center of a kind of a space, and you both take ten steps back from each other, kind of winding up twenty feet apart. Uh, and the duel commences. You can have as many. It's always an even number of people between the sides. We can have as many people on that side as you wish. Typically, summons, pets, companions are not allowed in these fights. Uh, this is a, a duel of men, or a duel of people, I should say. Uh, uh, any, and uh, traditionally, is it to the death? Uh, it's uh, the, the, each side gets to decide. Uh, so, you can kill if is you want. lethal or non-lethal? Your choice. Mock <laughs> Mockery basically went like, if we don't kill him, we'll dishonor him more. So we gotta kill I mean, him. this is your home turf. We get to we get to define our terms. Yes, uh, the defeat. If we can knock them all out, keep them down, that is good with me. All if right. we I are imagine... fighting for our lives, then of course we don't need to right. restrain ourselves. <laughs> but so, <laughs> this they're uh, gonna kill us. They said they want to. This is one or the other. This is lethal or non-lethal, right? You, you non guys oh well, they, they have. They have decided that their terms of defeating us is lethality, but we get to pick what we think is uh, the terms of defeat for them. Oh, in that case, that... I, I would like to not kill them. If that would not make them even more angry, I'm sorry. I, I've it will make them defeated, uh, and it will make them. Oh, sorry. What was the last thing you said? No, I... sorry. I, I was just doing my bit. I just like Mark. He's just like. I've drank a lot, and I've been hitting the head a lot. <laughs> Jeez, your oh, monastery, no. they, they're really good at punching. <laughs> All right. Well, we're going to see if we oh. can do some healing later. <laughs> Look, I, uh, again, 
do my best to try to keep things non-lethal, but my trigger finger is what got us into this mess in the first place. So I don't know if I can make any promises in that regard. So all of us are participating. Yeah, that's how it works. All right. Yes. You do see the Mandalok, like especially as you guys step forward, he points his great sword towards you, Wisteria. Uh, he looks towards the kind of the, the two riders that were there before. Uh, they give him a nod, and he goes, "You will fall first. All right. Arx, what's this arrangement he has with Rex? <laughs> <laughs> You see him look over to Commander Loke. Commander Loke looks very angry and he goes, if you live, you'll find. <laughs> All right. As I much as I... Commander Frax did not wish this outcome to occur. He had a different path, but... <sighs> he can he, he kind of see how he thinks about like not saying this, but he just says it. Mercenaries will be mercenaries. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Okay, so uh, are we starting this today because I have some stuff I can cast or next time? Oh, actually, I'll leave that to you guys. Do you want to do the duel today or do you guys want to wait till next session? I thought that was okay, in character yeah. and that was one of the most interesting <laughs> 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 Okay, we're doing this today because I got things I can or we wait. <laughs> uh, uh, I'm thinking next time. Okay. Yeah, I'm good with that. All right. All right. We'll pick this uh, the duel up next session. Uh, and then um, also a little bit of uh, extra pieces. Uh, we'll be, we should be, we should be able to fit all that in. We're going to do Jeet and Bell, uh, not Bell, Bell, Jeet and Mockeries, um, kind of archetypal quests. Uh, so we'll be going through connecting you guys with the faction. Jeet, yours is super easy. Uh, you're going to be doing your trials for the Flame Keepers uh, next session. Uh, Mockery, you know where yours will be, but we'll get that to the crew next time. I do. Uh, we get uh, into your archetypes on that portion. Uh, and then, kind of like a little bit of a layout for this, too. Uh, so we're doing that next session. We're not playing on, what's that, the 23rd? Uh, and then we're coming back on the 30th. Um, we're going to do the kind of makeshift peace summit at the uh, Burning Monastery on the 23rd. That's also going to be split with uh, Belrix. Uh, session as well. Uh, and then with that, we're going to be moving into uh, kind of the, the last little bit of downtime uh, and then getting into Wisteria and Will's session, uh, which won't be at the Burning Dragon Monastery. You guys will probably be making your way outside of there by that point. Uh, but yeah, so we'll get into those last few pieces. Uh, you can see how this uh, Duel of Blood and Honor goes. Uh, and dive into those uh, sessions. So everybody join us back uh, next week uh, and see how the crew fares. Uh, yeah, until next time, everybody. <laughs>